Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the McDon Cast, the funnest podcast in town. And we got Patrick back. Patrick, say hi. He's making his glorious return. He's finally back after 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 what? How long? Almost a year. I think uh, since the last Patrick think, episode. Last time he was here was about January. It's okay though. It's all I've been good. The podcast in five thousand. Yep. It's a. It's been going. It's been going great. But we're glad to have Patrick back. With that said, let's give you guys a brief rundown. We got Marvel TV reworks. Aquaman two production is nutty. Minecraft news, Netflix got a whole bunch of weird stuff going on. So many weird things going on with Netflix. And then a bunch of trailers. And then all, I think all we had for reviews this week was Loki episode two. Sir, um, you have any thoughts on that? I do, actually. Hmm. I'm going to take a wild guess and say Patrick did not watch it. Patrick, did you watch the new Loki episode? I watched the first one. Oh, well, that's something. That's more progress than we thought. Mm-hmm. Did you watch Ahsoka? Ever? He yeah, I watched all of it. Okay. What do yeah. you think? I liked it. I thought it was one of the better things they've made. I would agree. I think there was a bit of a slump there. Better or worse than the most recent season of The Mandalorian? Better. Okay. I yeah, agree with that. That's, it's probably like... I'd say it's better than... It's at the top of the mediocre pile. <laughs> I'd say it's no, better it's than... Like, it's like... Season two Mandalorian, or like just a little bit worse than Andor. Just a little bit is a stretch. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. I like it. Like personally, if I were gonna rewatch something, I would rewatch Ahsoka rather than Andor. I would rewatch Andor. I keep wanting to rewatch Andor. Andor is like special though. Like that's like you 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 only want to rewatch that you know every once in a. while. Ahsoka's like you just pop that. Up. I have like a million have shows a I need to be watching, and every now and then I'll just stop and be like, "But what if I just rewatched I Andor?" Andor though? was like just okay. Yeah, but, but that you yeah you weren't the biggest Andor. You are also wrong. Anyway, um, let's, let's talk get... about trailers, Tucker. Sam, what trailers we got? So let's start off with uh, a trailer for a movie called Horizon: An American Saga. Why are we talking about this? Okay. This is uh, written, co-written and directed by Kevin Costner. Also stars Kevin Costner. Who's the trailer Kevin is it the forty-two second one. Yeah. This okay. So this is one. Is this is two movies? One is going to be released June twenty eighth of twenty twenty four, and the second one will be August sixteenth of twenty twenty four. Uh huh. So, so let they're me, uh, less than two months why, apart. Why do we care about this? This is the move. This movie is Kevin Costner's like pageant, pa passion project of like the past thirty years. And it's the reason. Does that mean that he, it's worth our interest, though? It's the reason he had to leave his Yellowstone TV show is because he was trying to make this at the same time. Make his own more different version of Yellowstone. Yeah, it's got an all-star cast. Sam, listen to these names: Sienna Miller, Sam Worthington. I'm sorry, this trailer sucks. Michael Rooker, <laughs> Luke Wilson. I don't know who any of these people are. Jamie Campbell Bower. Was I supposed to be like? Uh, Does Larry Bagby are change these your mind? That I should know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I genuinely don't know. Who uh, you are. probably know who Luke Wilson is. It's Owen Wilson's brother. <laughs> oh wow! So Owen Wilson's less know, famous Owen brother. Wilson? They got Great. the. They got uh Jake Sully from Avatar. Wow! Well, you know he's he big. He's really big business right now. Avatar. Anyway, I just thought this was interesting. Yeah, I don't find it's this It's got like a $200 million budget or something crazy. That trailer, I'm Where sorry, that trailer that killed movie any movie? interest I had. It's literally just, okay, I know, for those of you who didn't just see it on the screen, it's literally just Kevin Cosner by himself on a horse, shoots a gun three times, and the trailer ends. Oh, they're making a third film as well. No, they're not. Yeah. No. They're going to start as soon as the actor strike ends. No, do you want to know how I know they're not? Well, no, they'll start shooting before the, the first one comes out. This movie will make a negative a no, billion no, no. dollars. You're correct. This is going to lose a lot of money. However, they're going to start shooting the third movie before the first or second film come out. What? Meaning they'll have to release the third one. That's really, really dumb. This is, the, this is a brilliant business strategy, in my opinion. How have they... I keep asking this, but how have they not learned? How have they not learned? When will they learn? Learn what? 
that instantly greenlighting six projects in a universe with absolutely zero proof of viability is a terrible idea. I think they're doing this because Kevin Costner's been around for a long time now. It's because they see the and views... And they feel like they owe him like his no, one project. They see the views on Yellowstone and they go, oh, if we make movie of Yellowstone, big views. That could be true. What if that this, is not true. What if this Sound of Freedoms? It won't. What if it does though? It why would it? It's got you old, can't, it's you got can't. dad appeal. It's if it's in any way uh, if it's in any way right leaning or apolitical, it'll attract a lot of uh, attention. But it's just a cowboy like western movies haven't made money okay. in like 50 Yellowstone years. Yellowstone is the most unremarkable TV series ever made yet is the literally like the most watched TV show out right that's now. That's because it's the only TV show <laughs> with a budget more than like $500,000 that's on network television. That's the only reason why. Well, this is going to have a high budget What's Indian it on? movie. What theaters. network? It's on I don't know. What Tucker what network is it? It's on? on Paramount Network. Paramount Network. It's also NBC? airing on CBS. No, now. wait. No, that's not NBC. That's Peacock. It's on, it's, okay, so it's produced by Paramount, but it's on Peacock because they accidentally gave them the rights to the, the streaming license. Hmm, smart. Yeah. Anyway, I think this could, I honestly think this could be a hit. At least, like, the first one. The first one could. I could see the first one. Release, like, hit. okay, the two movies in a year thing, uh, I don't think that works anymore. Like, it doesn't happen too often. I think the most high-profile example was probably... The Matrix sequels two and three came out in the same year. Yeah, one came out in like go? May. One came out in like November. Yeah, well, I killed their whole franchise. Well, like Reloaded did really good, and then Revolutions didn't do as well. But that was mostly because the second one was not very well received. And so by the time the third one came out, no one had any energy or excitement for it. Yeah, and they were burnt out because two of them. But just like, came out at the same time. like a less than two month gap in between movies. That's that's too short. I think that's because they wanted to make one really long movie and the studio was like... No, they they did. They wanted to make one really long movie and they cut it into three movies. So it's essentially one movie and three two-hour acts. Fine, I guess. Weird, but whatever. I'm, okay, you know what? He's been working on... Like Kevin Costner either. has been working on the project since 1988. I don't Does like... Is his butter expired? Is his butter expired? Yeah. What does I, that mean? I think Patrick's making a sandwich. Um, I think he might... Uh, I think he might be having a stroke right now. <laughs> He's having a Joe Biden moment. Um... <laughs> But I don't like this trend that Endgame started where every movie is three movies <laughs> and you only get to see a fraction of it the first time you see it. I didn't like it with... I mean, Infinity War was okay because it was the first time and it was like shocking. So we're all like, whoa. Was I didn't like it with Dune. That was just, just kind of stopped midway Well, Dune through. was kind of a necessity because that book is so long. That book is so long, so I, I at least understood it. And then we had Spider-Verse. Which just dead, dead, just slams into a wall, and the story just stops yeah. like halfway. Through. Which that one is especially remarkable because they literally don't know what the the story for the third part is. Which is insane because it seems fairly obvious. There was a but... report that came out a few week, like like a week ago, that they added that final scene where Gwen gets the old spider, like all the good spider yeah, that people was like together. Two weeks they added or two that like a, like a couple weeks before the movie came out. I think it was two months before. Yeah, which, which is how crazy. Animated movies are produced that because that crazy. is the storyline of the third one, and they didn't they didn't know what it was like before the movie came out. They didn't know what it was. That's nuts. Yeah, again, I'm not really given how animated movies are produced. That really doesn't surprise me. But anyway, next trailer. Let's talk about the there next was trailer. there was a trailer for Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. This is okay. This is a Thanksgiving slasher based on a trailer for a fake movie from a movie from 2007 let's be honest it's a knockoff of halloween okay oh wait is this gonna get us to monitor actually are you playing the trailer yeah. oh it might there's a there's, there's probably some, some there's blood some in big it. blood anyway we'll okay watch the first part i don't think this will be good but that's kind of what i want from it i want it to be schlock i want it to be a movie that feels like it was ripped straight out of 1982 or I mean, like this is the Thanksgiving slasher that never got made. In terms of like production value, like it looks good. Like there's slashers for every holiday. There's Halloween, there's Christmas, there's President's Day. Like this, Saint the Patrick's cinematography Day, is actually not bad. Fourth of July. They all have slashers. We never got well, the we'll true pass, we'll Thanksgiving the slasher. So I think it, this is schlock and it's low budget. 
I think this might take off. YouTube, if you demonetize us, you have to demonetize them too. That's the rules. I, um, I don't. I think they already are demonetized. Well, you know what? Whatever. Uh, do you demonetize an advertisement because that's what trailers are? I don't. I don't know. But yeah, this is, looks fine. I'm gonna skip the gore parts. Addison there. Ray is in it. Yay! <laughs> it's oh, her first geez. major film role. Man, I'm so excited about that. She's you can big tell on I'm TikTok. So hyped you think she's gonna pull the kids in? No. <laughs> no, and I think whichever executive thought she would doesn't understand. That's fair. Because the whole thing with TikTok is it just spits a thing at you. Ugh, what if Universal cuts the movie into like two minute TikTok clips and repost them? Then as it marketing. will make a billion million dollars. See, that's what they should do. And then they can avoid paying all their actors. Well, I don't know because uh, Teenage Kraken tried that. that did they do that recently? That didn't... Did Universal do it or did like the people try to make it a trend? Uh, no, they were like people. Oh, okay. It was so cringe. It was, I, this, is my wor this is my least favorite ad of all time. Um, they would, you know the song, I'm a Teenage Dirtbag? Yeah. They took that, and then they took the word Dirtbag, and they, they inserted a clip of the main character saying the word Kraken, but it wasn't, like, aggressive at all. She just says Kraken, like, very ill. So it's the song, it's like, I'm just a teenage Kraken, babe. It was so dumb. And that was the ad, and it was, like, That's random clips. Marketing, it was baby. random clips from the movie, and then it was that, like, audio clip. I think studios need to more cut up their films into TikTok clips. To, to Minions had it right. It Minions literally was made for TikTok. It's literally made Suits the most streamed television series the past year. Because there was like clips of it that were popping up on TikTok. Yeah, that clip of... Um, it's so crazy. That is like uh, the best marketing strategy. I know. It was that clip of him them. like applying to work for the law office went viral. And yeah. Like, guys, like, if you wanted people to watch our podcast, I'm just saying. Yeah, TikTok's where it's at, baby. It's a party over there. I just think it's so funny how people will like watch stream, will like scroll streaming services or watch trailers for stuff or see advertisements or their friends will recommend it. And they're still like, ah, oh, maybe I watch it. Maybe I won't. But they will see a clip from something on TikTok and they're like, I'm binge watching TikTok nine seasons of this stuff. show. It's, it's crazy to me. I don't understand it. I don't understand TikTok why. has hypnotized America. Thanks, whatever Chinese TikTok, government. Whatever TikTok says to do, people just do. Hail to the CCP overlords <laughs> who have banned TikTok in their own country. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Sam, there was a full trailer for Monarch Legacy of Monsters. This is Apple's uh, MonsterVerse show. Comes out on November 17th. Uh, looks pretty good. It does. It's an Apple show, which means it probably costs way, way, way too much money. It's going to look fine. really pretty. It's going to look really pretty, and it's going to be gray. Everything Apple makes is gray. I don't know why. Except, They're all gray. Except for uh, the, the show with the, the guy. Yeah, Ted that one. Very blue. Ted Lasso is very and blue, yellow. but like all of their original movies all have a gray like tint. I don't know why they do oh, it. Oh, no. East Gazira. Ah. <laughs> That's what I think every time I see a Godzilla thing. I don't even know where that audio is. Are we going to watch from. this? I don't know. I mean, there's a new... Uh, How much is Apple TV Plus? Like eight bucks? Like, I don't think it's gone Maybe. up. I think it might be six now. I think it was five. It might be six now. Yeah, but all you have to do is get it for a month. So it's like yeah. renting a movie. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. If I hear people talk about it... I feel it, like maybe. you might have to watch it before the next... Godzilla versus Kong movie, which comes out in like April. I'm not that. I'm not nearly invested enough in Godzilla lore to like watch okay, a show. But of all just of, to catch up on the of lore. all of the like cinematic universe things, this one requires like the least amount of time. There's like a two year gap in between each like individual product. Yeah, who... it's not as bad as like a Marvel thing where we have to like watch Secret Invasion every two weeks. <laughs> See, I don't want to watch Godzilla Secret Invasion though. <laughs> thing. I don't want to watch that. This looks like Godzilla Secret Invasion. I hope it's. What are you guys' thoughts on Secret Invasion? It was awful. Patrick, do you it not listen to my your own least podcast? favorite Marvel show? It's definitely. I watched one episode and it was really bad. It's definitely the worst Marvel watching. show. Yeah. By far. Really like, I don't bad. think it is. It... What is it? Okay, what but what are the good it? ones? Like, you know what it... what I, hate vision? I hate it because it ruined my favorite storyline from Earth's Mightiest Heroes. And that was like yeah. the, the Captain America scroll reveal, which they had built up over the course of like four years. The show only ran for two seasons, but sure. Yeah, but they, they didn't release it like in a normal schedule. They released like an episode a month. 
Yeah. So, I mean, what are the good Marvel shows? Like, Loki, WandaVision. Uh, that's it? Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Okay, so three out of... Moon Knight was good. Moon Knight I like Hawkeye. Good. Hawkeye is not... Hawkeye is fine. Great, but I like... Hawkeye was not, like, I like the vibe. I wouldn't think it was good. It was just fine. It was just Christmas. It had, like, a it fun, was... casual tone. It was just Christmas vibe. It, it felt just... like reading a comic book. No, like you, just you like just liked it because it was Christmas themed and it was Christmas. I did like the Christmas thing, but it felt like just like a like a pretty okay comic that you pick up like one issue of a week. Yeah, it was like chill. Like you it didn't was have just to a worry chill thing. It. Yeah, I, I wasn't super invested. It was just kind of fun. I liked Hawkeye. Everything else is like Secret Invasion is so like up its own butt and over dramatic. It, it thinks sucks. it's saying something and it's saying absolutely. It has nothing, nothing to say. Actually. Yeah. It actually, all it said was, please never watch me. This is, we should really hire actual TV writers yeah, for this. Yeah, it said, please uh, <laughs> fire the entire creative team behind this. Anyway, we'll get to that later. Uh, there was a trailer for John Woo's new film, Silent Night. This is an action film starring Joel Kinnaman. Uh, the Rangers just scored, everybody. Um, <laughs> this is his first film in a couple years in the U.S., I believe. Uh... Anyway, it looks kind of fun. Joel Kinnaman is mute. He has to get revenge because What's it called? Silent, Night. Silent Night because um, some gangsters or something killed his son on Christmas. Oh, so Ooh. this is not at all similar or will ever be confused with the movie that came out last year, Violent Night. It, well, it's got a different title, and this one is not about Santa Claus. Right, so. but it's a Christmas time movie where a guy murders. However, well, this one isn't Die Hard, though. Violent Night was just Die Hard in a building, in a house with Santa Claus. Yeah, that sounds more interesting. Violet Night wasn't terrible, though. You know, I liked Violet Night. <laughs> it's okay. I Violet Night was fun. This movie this looks, looks this one. This one looks oh, fun. John Woo can do life. action. He's. I like Joel Kinnaman. Uh, he sure do be angry. Rip news. Anyway, Just yeah, I'm interested near. to check this one out. All right, final trailer is for Invincible Season 2. Um, took okay. long enough. Why, why, oh, why did it take a million years for them to make a second season of this show? Uh, but it looks great. Uh, they're bringing in Angstrom Livy, which brings in the multiverse stuff. I got the, the season. Uh, yeah. It looks good. Looks like more invincible. They got a bunch of fun guest remember stars when, this year. When he goes, think, Mark. Yeah, I do remember the meme. I do remember. Oh, the, meme. the flying animation is still really bad. I don't think it's ever going to get better. I think you need to let That's that part go. So how? How does it not get better? <laughs> He, it's a PNG that they drag across the screen of him going. It looks so bad. It, it's hard to make it looks, flying look good in animation. It looks good in every like other animated okay, thing. But think about it. It's because all those people have capes. So give him a cape then. He doesn't have a cape. Why not? Because he doesn't. That's stupid. He doesn't in the comic book. But uh, so there's this... all kinds of shows where characters with no capes fly, and it doesn't look that. So stupid. this is going to be split into two parts. First four episodes are going to start dropping weekly in November. Uh, the second four will drop early next year, and then uh, Robert Kirkman said they're they're already that really far so along much. on season three. So season three will probably come out. I hate that so much. Late, late next year. Can we too. stop releasing half seasons? Stop it. Well, okay. Stop it. They do it because no. W. Is w but that's stop it. That. Stop. I don't care what your reason is. Enough. It's, it's ridiculous. Kind of, it's basically what they used to do with network Why shows. Why Rick and Morty do it? That's a network show. Rick and they have no excuse. It, it, it's what they did with every CW show ever. I mean, every every network show used to go on mid-season break. It's essentially yeah, what they do now. The but mid-season mid break, break was like a month. Not it was like, like a December, a like half the way through December till like late January. Yeah, it was a month. Not like six months. Yeah, and this one's going to be dropping like April. The and the show's month. already done. There's no reason to do a mid-season No, it's break. not done. That's, they're still working. That's why they How do How are it. they that far through season three if season two's not done? Because they're working on both at the same time. That's stupid. Work on one and finish I, it. I don't know. That's Sam. stupid. Everything about this is stupid. I don't Make understand. Shows normally. I don't understand why it took so long to do season two. Yeah, I don't understand why their third highest like they must show have just, isn't a bigger I don't, priority. I, 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 they must have just ex completely didn't expect to do more. Like they must have just told the team like this is probably gonna get canceled, which is super weird because it has a like an all star cast. So why that doesn't make any sense? Well, I think they were thinking like, oh, another superhero thing, cartoon show for adults. Those don't really be the kids, except for they definitely are, almost every time. I don't know. Animation for adults doesn't always catch on in the U.S. 
You got like The Simpsons, but even, that's not like that's like pretty Name broad. One animated adult cartoon other than Disenchanted and Hoops that didn't do well. There's really not that many of them. So yeah, hard. and they always usually do well. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's going on? Anyway, let's move on. Uh, more streaming news. Netflix. Oh, we have. There's so much weird Netflix. They're news. hiking their prices again. Uh, up three dollars. They're going up three dollars. So the premium tier is now going to be twenty three dollars, which is crazy. The basic tier is going to cost twelve dollars, and the ad supported tier well, that's going to stay ne- the same price. Like it's going to be seven. Out of Netflix now. What? He said everyone's, everyone's priced out of Netflix. Like, who can afford that? Okay, well, this is this is only going to continue, and it's not just going to be Netflix. The future of entertainment, as net as networks and cable and movie theaters are all pretty much, and physical media too. There was a news story this past. Yeah, well, th- I want to talk about that with the Netflix. Okay, okay. there's yeah. but that's all. I mean, network TV is going to be gone in ten years, ten to fifteen. Physical media is going to be gone at five. Uh, so what's going to happen here is there are, there's going to be like six major streaming services. They're all going to cost between 40 to 50, maybe even $60 a month. They're going to have a third of the content they do now. And you're probably going to have to pay. It, it's all going to be ads. And you're probably going to have to pay for stuff within the app on top of the monthly yeah. fee. That's It'll where we're exactly what cable about, is. Like, how this affects, I think the biggest reason cable is even still around is sports. Yeah. So, like, live sports moving, I know at least in the Big Ten, like, Indiana has games that are going to be on Peacock this year. Yeah, Big and there's Ten. There's a lot of football and stuff on Peacock now. Yeah, Big Ten has like, a Peacock deal. Um, no, it will become. Thursday Night Football is on Prime Video. It will become exactly the same as cable After because Peacock markets Peacock exist in equilibrium and the market will eventually reach um, equilibrium, which is cable. Max just revealed the new sports package, which has NBA. NHL and MLB playoffs on it. Yeah, do like, we have that? Because those are all showing up. Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's even not even like they're putting the garbage games onto the streaming services. They're putting like the yeah, prime actual time real games. Yeah, ESPN really Plus matches. has exclusive NFL games this year. So like, Peacock has an NFL playoff game exclusive to the app. Like that's that's where we're headed. And honestly, what that's probably going to be its own priced thing, because what will probably end up happening is the NFL will start its own streaming app. We'll pay like thirty dollars, thirty to a hundred dollars, maybe probably probably it'll, around a hundred dollars. It'll work a year. exactly like cable does, where there will be a sports package that you pay to put on top. Well, of even that, you'll probably pay a hundred dollars a year just to watch like, like Cowboys games. Works pretty good the way it is. What works pretty good? Cable. Yeah. The cable. problem is, is that not enough people have it to be a. Uh, not anymore. Not anymore. It for was it to work. sustainable. Everyone left for much cheaper streaming, and now the... led the industry dry. And now they're trying yeah, to reach equilibrium again by really raising expensive. prices until it becomes cable. Yeah, that's what this is. What we this is where this we is are always, always headed. Yeah, this has always been the, the we end game. are lucky enough. Everyone, everyone listening, everyone out there was lucky enough to live to live in the golden age where there was a, like two streaming services that were both churning out insane levels of content. A lot of which was insane quality and original. Like that is that is insane that we lived in that time. You know exactly what you sound like right now. What? Our grandparents, whenever they talk about how cool cable was when it used to have no. Okay, ads. no, but seriously, like. No, I'm no, I'm I'm making a comparison here. It, the same thing happened again. We lived literally in the golden age of TV, and that's going to fade away. We're gonna get less shows, uh, more IP, more expensive. It's just it was bound to happen. That's like, we the the place we were at was never going to be sustainable at where it was. No, absolutely not. No, there's... you were never gonna be able to pay ten dollars a month and have three new ad free. TV shows dropping each with a, a budget week. of three hundred million dollars. Yeah, that was always absurd. So that this is the inevitable outcome. Uh, but anyway, Netflix says it's working. They claim that they gained eight point seven six new million new subscribers in the last quarter. Uh, Absolutely. They, they no say way. that's mostly due to the success of the ad supported <clears throat> tier. By the way, these ad supported tiers, this is where streaming is headed. Yeah, that's exactly where cable went. Those will go up in price, and you'll slowly see these premium ad-free tiers get phased out. Yeah, they will eventually intentionally price themselves out of the market. Prime before... Video announced a couple weeks ago that they're going to add ads to the platform. The fact that there were no ads on Amazon Prime was insane to begin with. Amazon Prime has gotten so much better. It really has. I'm proud of you, Amazon. <laughs> you, with your two shows. The UI shows is now. so much cleaner. They have three shows now, guys, except for one of them is the same as one of their... Did you, are you up to date on Gen V? 
I am. It's actually really good. I'm not. I'm uh, I'm on episode five. I think that's up to date. Is that up to date? Oh, I haven't watched all of it. I, I had to stop like halfway through. Yeah, um, I like it. I think it's. I think it's okay. I think it's a little bit. It's. It's. I'm a bit disappointed with the. Like what the main threat is. What with the evil lab that yeah like, is that was like that's very lame. But that was I, like the most basic surface level thing they could have come up with. But I am a little bit more engaged in this show because the stakes feel more. It's a balanced. little bit for a show that's all about the superhero characters. It feels a lot more like grounded and smaller scale than, than which the is boys does. weird since you know everyone has superpowers yeah. in this one, and in the boys, only like two of them do. This one, uh, Gen V is a little bit not that it is, has like a bright tone. It's a little bit of like a. A little bit brighter and more comedic than I'd say the boys is. Although it was late. Especially late, once they got into like season two, the when, boys when gets was the like show written. Gen V? Yeah. Probably like two or three years ago. Because there was the PewDiePie is a Nazi joke. That was like, are you guys, what is this, 2017? What yeah. are you guys doing? No one even remembers that. It didn't even happen. That was the best part of that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like nobody even remembers when that was like a non traversy. Yeah. Like that, that lasted like. The only notable thing to come out of that was that his they canceled his YouTube Red show. Yeah, that was, was the only thing that happened. With that. And then like pasted onto a different creator, so it's it still came out either way. Anyway, oh, um, you want to talk about Netflix and doing stores? Yeah. Or so Netflix. Okay, so there's two two things I want to combine into one story. So one, Best Buy announced earlier this week that they will be discontinuing physical media sales. I'm so mad uh, about this. In the on uh, starting in 2024. So after 2024, they will just not sell DVDs or Blu-rays. They won't sell 4Ks, no more Steelbooks. They probably don't do especially well for them anymore. What? They probably don't sell very well. Well, yeah, I would imagine they don't. It's not even that they won't carry them in stores. They're not going to sell them online either. Yeah. They're going to be completely gone, which the local Best Buy near us, which sucks now, by the way, they've ruined, they... They remodeled it and they... They screwed that Best Buy into the ground. so dumb now. That one already doesn't sell Blu-rays. Yeah, because it, it was remodeled like they very they already don't. So all of these stores are going to slowly phase them out, which sucks because they were the only ones who ever had any. <laughs> and no, Walmart does. Walmart section, even Walmart section, has shrinked. No, but they have that one. My problem with Walmart, they have that one floating Blu-ray shelf. My problem with Walmart is that it's mostly DVDs. No, they have, Blu-rays. and they never re- they do have Blu-rays, but most of what they have is DVDs. And they never restock anything. Walmart always is out of DVDs and Blu-rays, and they never restock them, and then they complain that they're not selling well. Well, they probably order, like, the bare minimum amount they, they like, are required need to, to keep them, yeah. like, profitable. I, I went to Target to... to I went on... I don't know why. One day, I, I just went on, like... I went to, like, four stores just looking for Blu-rays. Why? That's so I weird. don't know, because I'm, I'm crazy. But I went why to... Didn't you just, Amazon even had Target, like 30% off Even Target... Even Target had, like, four. Like, even Target had nothing. Like, Target section is also shrunk. So that's what I was saying. Like, uh, it's going to turn into a completely thing you order online. You know, online. Amazon had, like, a 70% off Blu-ray sale this week. Yeah, I did really? go to Amazon. I bought that copy of Halloween Kills, which is a movie I don't even like. Why? Because it wasn't on streaming anywhere. But you don't like it. So, But it was, like, $6. So you're not going to ever watch it. <laughs> I did. I watched it yesterday. Why? <laughs> what? Because uh, I was watching. Uh, Get your six dollars worth. Well, it's Halloween season. That's like two dollars an hour. So I was. I watched one, two, and three, the original ones, and then I watched twenty eighteen. I was like, okay, Kills well now I have ends. to watch Kills and not, and then watch Ends. Ends is on Prime Video though, so I probably won't buy Ends yet. Anyway, um, so that happened, um, this this week, and then at the same time. Netflix announced that they will be opening up some brick and mortar location. Speaking of Amazon, that works great for them. Which, uh, yeah, so Netflix will be opening uh, what I think they are calling them Netflix houses. If I saw their announcement correctly the first okay. time I read it, um, which will, according to their like little blurb, will have like whatever the the hottest shows on Netflix are. So I assume they'll have like. Some version of a movie Stranger Things screen. and Wednesday. Yeah, and they'll be and... showing stuff in there. They will have merch for the newest shows, and they will have fan experiences. That means they're going to dress up a room like the Upside Down and go, it's the Stranger Things fan experience. Why doesn't yeah. Netflix just partner up with already existing theaters? They do. They own several Netflix theaters. Netflix owns several theaters. 
They're just mostly in LA and in New York. Because they use them for film festivals. Yeah, that's literally the only reason they own them. Oh. They don't like giving their movies wide releases. They are staunchly against it. This, this... They don't want people to see their things. No, they don't want them to not... They, want, they don't want them to see it anywhere but Netflix, which is why they also don't release anything on physical media. Which well, you know, they imagine do. how much cooler it would look on a big They screen. released their, like, really, okay. really big They released movie. the first two seasons of Stranger Things on Blu-ray, and then they never released seasons three or four. Season three? No, they came out eventually. Mm-hmm. I thought they did. They did not. Yeah, because uh, what's-his-face got really mad at us for talking about Stranger Things, and he's like, I was going to buy it on Blu-ray. Now you spoiled it. Um, trust me pal it never came out anyway would it be great if since they're opening up brick and mortar stores I could buy a couple of Netflix movie blu-rays while I'm in there please I'd like to get a glass onion on blu-ray that would be nice that's all I'm saying you actually want the glass onion on blu-ray yeah glass onion was good it was like okay does Patrick not like glass onion the hot take it was it was fine Ooh, what'd you not like about it it wasn't nearly as good as knives out i liked it about the same i think knives uh-huh. out was better but it was still pretty good he just started working there on the one of, one. i would rewatch knives out i would not rewatch glass onion okay according to the okay is Str- stranger writers an official thing is that in any way affiliated? on twitter yeah, yeah that's the writer okay they did say that they were working on seasons three and four. To get them to, out on Blu-ray. To get Blu-ray, yeah. So they are, it is in the process of being Blu-ray. Hopefully. And that was, I don't know when that was, that was from like a screenshot. So season one came out on Blu-ray, but the time season two came out, and then two came out around the same time as three. So I don't know why three didn't come out around four, especially Who's... since there was like a three-year gap in between. Yeah, they had plenty of time. They had, play, they had ample time. I'm sure just saving but like, those, those MP4s to I'd a love disc to get, I'd love hard. to get Midnight Mass on like a steelbook. I just want... Can I get every Mike Flanagan show on Blu-ray? Anyway, so I need to watch Fall of the House. Keep saying words. We'll talk no, about it later. Anyway, sure made up. Sam, you probably want to talk about Minecraft. Yeah, let's talk about some Minecraft. <laughs> We're the only people that care. So, well, I don't care. Sam cares. Minecraft has been in a bit of a slump recently. Ever the, since 2019. The, the golden era of Minecraft's second golden era. Well, it had a golden era, and then it had a renaissance, and now it's Now it's back entering the, what, the what slums. Was, the, was the era after the renaissance? The dark ages? The dark ages. <laughs> Minecraft is entering the dark ages. Now. I thought the dark ages was before Ooh, no, I'll look it up while you talk. Um, so, anyway, the point is... Minecraft has had... It's been a while since Minecraft had a banger on it. In terms of updates. The oh, no, of, the, yeah, the Dark Ages was before. That. Okay, yeah. The game is too mature. It doesn't have anywhere left to go. That's, that's kind of true. Okay. Well, they, that's because they refused that's to let it have anywhere left. they refused to add more to it. Okay, yeah, we're going to get there. So, Minecraft, ever since the, the Caves and Cliffs update... In, was, in my opinion, the last update, the last real update. There have been, I think, two major updates since then, one of which I don't remember, one of which uh, was the Tales and Trails update, which added uh, literally nothing, oh like a couple different wood variations, and then like a camel and a sniffer, which no one's ever seen, so I don't even think What is the added. sniffer, and why is it ugly and weird? I don't know. All it does is sniff up flowers that have, like, no purpose. You, you can't make, like, a potion with them. They have no effect on the gameplay at all. Oh, thanks. Um, and then before that, they added the LA, which I also don't believe was added to my... I don't believe in the LA. I've never seen one. I, I don't believe that they exist. Um, my point is, it's been a while since Minecraft made a substantial update to the game. Oh, one thing that they did change in Tales and Trails, though, was making it impossible to get netherite armor. They made it so in order to upgrade from diamond to netherite, you had to get a upgrade template, which only spawn in nether bastions and are consumed upon using. So you have to find, like, four nether bastions in order to, like, get netherite armor. I think that's cool. I think there's nothing better than making things harder. Yeah, there's nothing better than making the game just take... just ruining the pacing of the game outright. But, uh, anyway... They announced some new stuff. Okay, for, let's, let's start. They announced a new mob vote. 
Tucker, did you Tucker? You you saw what happened? Yeah, you with the mob you vote. were you were keeping me up to date. I, I I educated Tucker on on the mob vote. The mob vote caused a bit of a stir this year. The people the peoples were fed up. The peoples, in light of all the other political things going on in the world, were like, you know what I care about? You know what I'm going to choose to get dedicate my time to? Mob vote. The Minecraft revolution. So a bit of a Minecraft revolution happened on like Twitter and TikTok. By the way, it didn't work. Yeah, where people got like really up in arms. They were making full on like propaganda, like Soviet era, it was like kind of revolution funny, posters. It was pretty. It was pretty fun. Um, demanding that Mojang just simply add all three mobs since they don't really do anything anyways. Might as well. Sam, add they're busy guys, all right? They're busy guys. They gotta. Uh, they gotta add nothing to the game. Anyway, they have one game. Yeah, they have to manage their one successful game. <laughs> But the, the, the revolution failed. Uh, the, the three mobs that were up for vote were penguins, which were supposed to make boats go faster, similar to how dolphins make you swim faster. Uh, crabs, which uh, drop a, a crab claw that would allow you to place blocks from farther away. Which I thought that one would win. And it was winning in, in every poll up until the, the, the main vote. And I'll get to that, too, because there's was, controversy there as well. It was rigged. Um, and rigged to the, the armadillo, vote. Which I believe Trump drops now. these little scales that you can use to make dog armor. Um, Why don't they just cut them all? Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, you heard a Russian 1950s propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, people wanted them to add them all. Uh, but the armadillo ended up winning the vote during this year's Minecraft Live. However, some people did start doing some digging because it didn't make no sense. All these polls were going up. Crab was winning every time. What's going on here? People did some digging. They were going into the metadata of like the, like the vote website stuff. And apparently like the majority of votes cast for the Armadillo were from like Minecraft accounts that didn't have user IDs. Mm -hmm. So they were like auto-generated bot accounts. So there is some speculation right now that the the vote was was botted and like that's all beside the point though. That's just that's just pretext. For dog that, armor though. So dog armor is coming to Minecraft, but let, let's talk about the actual event a little bit here. So after about forty five minutes of saying nothing, just telling us what they added last year, which we already know about because you're we're watching my like know what's in the game. They, they announced some stuff. So Minecraft Legends is getting some new enemies and some new updates. They wow, if anyone played that game, I'm sure this would be big. Apparently, they have, like, reworked the game to a pretty big degree. They, they did the whole, we've heard the community's feedback, and we've made some changes. We're there, sorry. Our which game is code is for, sucks. oh, I'm so sorry we messed up. Please, please try our game again. Please, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's what that really means. But that's what they said. So uh, Minecraft Legends is getting some fixes. Um, there was a really bizarre announcement. That totally caught me off guard. There is a M Minecraft Star Wars collaboration spin-off DLC called Path of the Jedi. Oh, I did see this. This is weird. Which, as far as we have been told, is a full story campaign that takes place during the Clone Wars, where you play as a Jedi character and you go to different planets and do missions. This is turning into Disney Infinity. Yeah, it, it, it is basically <laughs> Disney Infinity in Minecraft. And they showed some shots of, like, you can fly ships around, and there were, like, planets that were big squares. So I don't know what's going on with that. All we were, all we were shown is a trailer. So I don't have much in terms of, like, hard information on that, other than the trailer that and what they said cool. afterwards. It does sound cool, but uh, I, I don't really understand what is going on with that. So, uh, moving on from that. Uh, it comes out in November. Yeah, it comes out in November, so we'll find out soon, I guess. Uh, Minecraft Education announced their third... That's still around? Yeah, Minecraft <laughs> Education announced their third BBC collaboration DLC. Apparently, there's two waves of Minecraft Education okay, BBC sure. DLC. <laughs> okay, cool. Um... Then they started announcing stuff that is actually in the game. So stuff that this is when I started paying attention. Michael. Um, trial chambers, which are a new naturally spawning structure similar to villages uh, and uh, 
you know, those like pyramids, that kind of stuff. Um, they spawn underground. They are made mostly of copper and this new kind of stone. I love uh, stone. They are full of like corridors and like rare items. So kind of similar to like the, um, the stronghold, but like not with an end portal in it. And it's a little bit bigger as far as I can tell. Um, there's some new blocks, uh, copper bulbs, which are a new light source and copper grates, which are exactly what they sound like. Um, trial spawners are a new thing, which are, you know, the mob spawners, the, the, yeah, yeah. So it will spawn a certain amount of them based on how many players are nearby. And then once you kill all of them, it will dispense a certain amount of emeralds. So it's kind of like a little mini, you know, little fight scripted fight mm. thing, which is cool. I'm down with that. That sounds fun. Um, yeah, so the difficulty changes depending on the amount of players nearby. Uh, they added an auto crafter, which automatically crafts stuff for you. <gasps> you can finally make factories. Yeah, so uh, we no longer need to rely on the slave labor of villagers. You can actually or you just can make a factory. Do both. Or you can do both. You could have it so villagers farm their wheat for you, put it in a chest, and, and then the bread. thing automatically makes bread. Like a slave bread factory. It, that's perfect. That's what Minecraft was missing. More and that's what you should do in real life. More efficient slavery. <laughs> um, <laughs> it should put that on the box. You deleted uh, some of my stuff here, but the I moved all your notes. Your notes are still in the bottom. I didn't move um, I'm missing a pretty big chunk. But okay, never mind. I just at the bottom. Uh, there was a new boss mob added, sort of similar to the the Wither, although this one is called the Breeze. And he's like a little tornado-y wind guy. And he lives in, the, uh, in these trial chambers. He shoots Ooh. wind balls at you, and it activates, like, traps that are, un like, on the ground. So, like, he'll shoot you with something, and it'll, like, drop you into, a, like, a chamber underground. So it looks pretty fun. Looks cool. They didn't say what he does or if he does anything or if he drops anything, so we have no idea. Um, but he's being out of the game, so that's fun. Cool. Uh, all of this stuff has been added to Minecraft snapshot builds. Uh, day of play out try test out these new stuffs if you want uh and then at the end alec benjamin randomly sang a minecraft parody of let me down slow they ended they should have ended it on a performance of one of the classic minecraft parodies from the early 2010s and really banked on the well they showed clips from those they show clips of fallen kingdom or take back yeah. the night they were like we know you guys like minecraft parody so we got an actual musician you know to do what minecraft parody. that should have been the movie just a bunch of minecraft no mods. take like, like the you know the take back the night trilogy you want it to be a jukebox musical the fallen kingdom no you don't have to include the song i'm <laughs> saying like that should have been the minecraft movie yeah that's a much more compelling just story like than 90 minutes actually told that as like an animated movie yeah that'd actually probably be sick on our it's basically minecraft just the musical, lion king but minecraft like the musical would have been an absolute the lion king doesn't kill a giant minecraft the musical that that's that's 900 million right there. how do you do that you do Minecraft, but they sing. Is it, is it a jukebox sing. parody musical where they no, just sing Minecraft parody songs? they write, like, songs? original songs and they sing. Okay. Um, well, that's Patrick, pretty much we, it for the Minecraft Patrick, event. should we work together to make the Minecraft musical? I guess not. Oh, um, so shot down that, my that's idea. That's pretty much it for the Minecraft event. Um, I don't know. They said that they're going to announce more for the Minecraft... 1.21 update or as just make minecraft 2 as no 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 minecraft 3 it was minecraft 2 when it was 10 1.10 is a 2 1.20 that's a 3 so the minecraft 3.1 update um they said that this is not going to be everything that's added to it they're going to announce more stuff later on they need to just do minecraft 2 like that would be they don't even have to like put any effort into it if they just made like one small update no you released minecraft and called it minecraft 2 it would sell like 20 million copies what would happen in an hour. if you released minecraft 2 is that a bunch of people who haven't played minecraft in 10 years would go and play it and they'd be like wow there's so much new yeah stuff. exactly yeah if you just tell them it's a new game they'll think it is no they just need to add post-game content like that's a new it. dimension or something yeah. that's really okay someone explained it this way and i, I like this analogy but think of minecraft as like a a, a bar right there's the Ender Dragon at the end of the bar and, like, you spawning at the beginning of the bar. Everything that they have added, save for, like, the end cities, takes place in between that bar, yeah. right? And there's the... What they need to do, make the bar longer. Put stuff that happens after the Ender Dragon. Put some other stuff going on. Let me go to heaven. 
yeah, add the Aether, which is a thing people have wanted since the the game existed. Yeah. Or like, uh, remember those two weird god characters that like read a dialogue to you when you beat the Inner Dragon? Let me kill them. Let me fight those guys. Yeah. What are they doing? Anyway, isn't one of them supposed to be Notch? I have no idea. The ending is obviously not. Um. Anyway, let's let's move on. Let's move on. Sam, you want to talk about high high profile? Wait, I didn't talk about the Microsoft deal. Oh. Um. Microsoft finally finished buying Activision. This is like the opposite of a divorce. Yeah. So they got married, (laughs) but except for everyone didn't want them to get married. They did anyway. Um. So the European version of the um like security and exchange commission or whatever it's called they're they're like economy regulating people um finally let microsoft buy activision that was the last hang up um however there is some really really bizarre like things going on here so they are allowed to buy activision blizzard Mm -hmm. um all the Call of Duty games have to be on Sony consoles for the next 10 years. That was like, that, sure. that, was, that was something they talked it about. It would, make, it would make sense not to. The deal um, closed at $69 billion. Nice. Nice. Um, I think Patrick might just be gone. Yeah, Patrick may have. But, you know. Um, what? No, nice. Nice. Oh, he says nice. Okay, he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um,. But as part of the deal, Microsoft agreed to hand over the rights to cloud gaming for all the Activision games to Ubisoft. Huh? Yeah. So, you know how, like, you can stream games on xCloud? Yeah. So, for these games, you will not be allowed to stream them on xCloud, and you will have to stream them... From Ubi Doobie Doobie Soft streaming platform. How long does this deal last? Uh, it's uh, for as long as they have the company. Okay, until they appeal. Yeah. All right. Which could be in like a year. I don't think they're gonna appeal because they'd have to appeal in the European court, and they actually. Oh, this is in Europe. Yeah. So they can't just wait for the next president to be elected. And no, they can't them. just wait to buy. Shoot, Trump, Trump Biden. Uh, some rematch car or something. Nursing home edition. <laughs> can't wait so yeah this is really weird i don't know what ubisoft has to do i don't know how ubisoft got involved they just kind of came out of nowhere and just well ubisoft and game pass had a deal right already so that's probably how they got involved yeah but ubisoft as far as i'm aware does not have a cloud streaming service they have a streaming service yeah i forget what it's called it's called like ubisoft connect or something yeah, but as, I thought that that was like a like a console to phone thing. Ubisoft Plus. That's Game not a streaming subscription that's a, service. Yeah, but that's that's like Game Pass. That's Starting not, at fifteen dollars a month. That's like Game Pass. It's not like play on streaming. Xbox consoles. Yeah, like I said, that that's more like game. You don't stream the game. Play with the cloud through Luna. Oh, so it's through Amazon Luna. Yeah. So they don't own a cloud. So Amazon gets to do it. So Amazon gets the rights. So Amazon wormed its way in and now has the rights to stream. This is so stream. weird. This is the cloud a weird... stream Ubisoft or uh, Xbox or Activision games. But anyway, that's it for the Microsoft Activision deal. Three years in the making. Very cool. Love that another company finally, ate another big company. Finally glad we can stop talking about this story because I'm wait so for, bored of it. I can't wait for Exxon to own every company. It's going to be great. Like in that Parks and Rec episode? Yeah, there's going to be one of America's three companies. <laughs> Anyway. All right, tell me about Aquaman. I'm so glad 2. I wasn't oh. here for the entirety of talking about that story. Tucker, tell me about how Elon Musk well, got involved in Aquaman. Patrick, I know you love three things. That's the 2018 Aquaman film, yes. Amber Heard's divorce trial, and Elon Musk. And of I got course. a story for you. Okay, so court documents leaked from the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard court case revealed that Amber Heard made statements to her therapist about the behavior of Jason Momoa, who, of course, plays Aquaman in the Aquaman films. Uh, She claims that Jason wanted her fired and dressed like Johnny Depp on set uh, to make her upset. He also was drunk multiple times. A spokesperson from Warner Brothers responded saying, uh, Jason works really hard on set. He likes to have a beer 
once in a while like everyone, but he doesn't show up drunk to he set. He does show up drunk to her court trial, though. And he isn't dressing like Johnny Depp. Okay, I wouldn't. I would not be entirely surprised if he did show up drunk. Honestly, but also that's I'm not to fully that's the best Amber way to film. That's very movie. cool. Honestly, I'm I'm down with that. <laughs> um, he isn't dressing like Johnny Depp. He is always dressed in that bohemian style, says the Warner Brothers spokesperson. Um, <laughs> heard also accused director James Wan of being inappropriate on set, uh, which was also denied by the spokesperson. Uh, when were Ver- these accusations made? Uh, she said these to her therapist. Okay, how did how did we get how do why do we because know about what she her said to her therapist? Because what she said to her therapist, like the notes and documents the therapist had, were subpoenaed during the trial with during her divorce, and now that's all public stuff. Um, Variety revealed that Heard was almost fired f- from the sequel uh, before it began production for what the studio internally diagnosed as chemistry issues with Momoa, which honestly tracks. I don't remember them being particularly good together in the original aquaman but i also don't remember anything don't that really happened remember, in the original yeah, i don't aquaman. remember them being together on screen at all so can anyone name a single detail from that movie probably not they went to the desert at one point didn't he use his sweat as like a key to open a door he used his sweat to activate a recording yeah 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 i remember the big crab uh, i remember the octopus playing the drums and i do remember a big crab that's true um it was also reported by variety that herd was only kept on the project because her ex-boyfriend uh, elongated muskrat uh, had his attorneys threatened to bring the studio to the ground if she was fired from the project. Which is super weird. Because as far as I'm aware, is... um, Elon Musk was dating Grimes okay. during the period this Hold time. Up. Is Elon Musk... Yeah, they had like 15 children together. Yeah. yeah. Is Elon Musk the biggest simp of all time? I think so. I don't think that he threatened to destroy the nearly the now 100 year old studio of Warner Brothers on the basis that his ex girlfriend might get fired. Because again, <laughs> let me remind you, he was with another woman who was pregnant with his child, and she was not during into him. this time. <laughs> and and Amber Heard, as far as I'm aware, was not dating him at all. No. Like, well, she had before, but not, yeah, but but not at not this point here. in time. Yeah. Not when he was had another woman pregnant with his child. Why would you do that? Like, why would you care? Like, he, he's maybe re- he's a really he, big maybe Aquaman he's fan. a really big simp. Like, that's the only explanation. Well, no, th- that's obvious. Like, it, you can't. No one does this <laughs> and is not a simp. That's not even a, like a question. The I co- mean, it could have been a case of because it says his legal team, so maybe. Uh, Amber Heard had the same legal team for a while, or something like that. But it has to have been literally. No, the... no, no. Because if she had, she pro- if she had Elon's legal team, she would not have lost to the Johnny That's Depp true. trial. Well, I, it has to have been she called up Elon and said they're gonna fire me. Tell them no, and then he was like, okay. And then he called up his lawyers and was like, threaten Warner Brothers to let Amber Heard be on this movie. But like, why would he go out of his way to do that? Don't. That's so he weird. Wouldn't. Okay. To be fair, Elon Musk is two is three things: really lazy, really dumb, and doesn't like actually accomplish any actual like work. Or and remember when? Achievements. Remember when like he used to do things that made people think he was like hire people who were smart and then tell them a really dumb idea, and then when they actually made it a real thing, he claimed all the credit. Yeah, but that was cool though. Or when he bought. A company that was already a massive success and then continued to drive it into the ground on the basis like, okay, of turning okay. it into something weird. He, and he owns Tesla and he was making cars, but like most people don't know how to make cars. So like we're like, okay, that's magic. He made like rocket ships. We're like, okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know how to do rockets. That's smart. Okay, smart. well, he owns. Then he does Twitter and everyone goes, oh, well, we all use Twitter. This experience is terrible. This guy's an idiot. Well, okay. He owns three companies, right? He only co founded Four one. Four companies. What's the fourth one? The Boring Company. Isn't that when airplanes? Yeah, but when? No, that's no, that's Boring. Boeing, Boeing makes something. airplanes. What is Boring? Boring makes flame Boring the tunnels. The tunnels. <laughs> they make tunnels. But apparently, they make tunnels, but they they also make flamethrowers. Well, he only co-founded SpaceX. Yeah. And SpaceX and is literally PayPal. and PayPal. Which SpaceX did, did, operates entirely own. off government contracts, and all they do is build rockets. Okay. Yeah. Tesla already existed when he bought them. He, it's not like he invented electric cars. They already existed. Yeah. I mean, you can make the popularized argument that he popularized them or marketed them better than everyone else. But 
it's it's not like which is fair. Like, I mean, that's that's what people. But it's not like he was doing the advertising. It was other people doing. Yeah, it. but like it's the same thing with like Steve Jobs and Apple. Yeah, like everyone attributes okay, Apple's success Steve to Steve Jobs, Jobs. Started Apple. Elon that's Musk true. did not start Tesla, or like decide the products they were going to. Steve make. Jobs was fired from Apple and then brought and back. then brought back because they. So needed at help. that point, you yeah. could definitely argue that that it's. And then there's Twitter, which was around for 15 years when he bought them. Uh, removed the company of all of its branding, made it way harder to use. Everyone hates it and him now. He also paid way over what it was actually worth. So, super cool. Anyway, um, yeah, he has like money to spare. So, that's not true. anymore. Quickly run. Did you see what happened to Tesla stock prices today? Yeah, they went down. They went down by like a lot. They'll go back up. They always go. Buy some. Uh, <laughs> the film okay anyway back to aquaman so it's tested poorly it's undergone reshoots several times uh, throughout production insiders describe it as an echo of the old regime uh the studio generally hopes to just like move on from this and this whole era of dc movies they want to be done with it their hope they have a little bit of hope for aquaman because the first one made so much money million dollars and again i said this many months ago but even <sighs> if this one does half of that it'll still be successful. it'll still be like profitable like on streaming and like pvod later like it probably won't make all its money back in theaters but it'll be like just profitable enough to not lose money yeah so i think they have some hope in that department but they really just want to move into the gun and saffron era and variety reported that currently there are no plans to bring back any of the actors from 2017's justice league yeah all no gone. ben affleck Bye -bye. no henry cavill no gal gadot no Ray Fisher, no Ezra Although Miller. they did say that they did However, plan to bring back Jason Momoa. They said that Momoa is in talks to appear in the new films, as, but as Lobo. As Lobo, which I'm 100% down. They he, say he they looks don't, like Lobo. They say they don't know whether he's going to be in Superman Legacy or in his own uh, movie. I think he could be in either. Like, I could see Lobo him could pop up. up in Superman. Uh, I don't know what he would... I mean, I guess they would fight, but like, I don't know what in, his point. Well, in this universe, Superman isn't like the first one. I don't so, like. There might be guys around. I don't think that would be a good idea to have him show up in the first DCU movie because I feel like that would confuse people. And why? What if he just shows the up? The same in, like, actor a... showed up as Lobo yeah. that was Aquaman like a year ago. I feel like you just want a little bit of time just so people can kind of like forget about Aquaman a little bit. But I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, this is good. This whole thing needs to die. Uh, everyone needs a break from let it from these. Die. They need a break from comic book movies in general. I think we need a little bit of time just for like Hollywood to figure out what their next trend that they're gonna chase is, and they can kind of like get that on its feet before we we leave the solid. In, in the, the dust. words of Kylo Ren, "Let the past die. Kill it if you have to." Well, just buddy. Kill it. Do it. Take it out back. The Marvels is projected to have the lowest opening or one of the lower openings of a Marvel film. I like half of the first one. would be entirely like unsurprised million. if that was the case. Now, I would say, uh, to give the movie some credit, most of their marketing campaign was probably going to be sending those three actors out to do press together. They can't do that. But also, just from being a person interacting in society, the the excitement or anticipation for anything marvel the is overwhelming in the gutter feeling right towards now. marvel is like apathy it's become mcdonald's yeah it has become the thing that is there that is just like the most generic boring this is dc's perfect time to come in and make start making good See, movies it is and it isn't it isn't that it's like marvel's lowest point but it's also like the general public is so burned yeah, out that, on superhero that's crap. That's the thing is most... And getting them to care about a new thing is, like, the hardest thing you could possibly most do. Most people do not distinguish between DC and Marvel. They go see a bad Marvel movie, and they go, superhero movies suck. Yeah. They go see the bad yeah. Flash movie, and they go, superhero movies suck. They don't, they don't go, oh, well, you know... DC movies are like kind of all right right now. Marvel movies are doing whatever. Yeah, they, no, they, they won't don't think differentiate. About it like that. They'll just be like comic book thing bad right now. Yeah, it's time for Star Wars movies. <laughs> Star Wars, maybe, it's maybe not. it is. It's not. It's been a while. It's 2019. That was it's almost been been four years ago. Four years ever again. Years that's several years. I don't. I, don't, I feel like the general. <laughs> they gotta do Dave Filoni's movie now. No, people are. People are okay. That's the thing about. I Star hear Wars. okay. When I do hear people talk about Star Wars, which is 
less often than Marvel. There is like some level of like, we like this. Marvel is just like nothing. They don't care. Because we still have faith in, the fans still have faith in Star Wars. Like, <laughs> completely unjustifiable level of faith. Well, no, because <laughs> as much as the movies sucked, most like all of the of movies them since 1983. have always sucked. Yeah. Except for like, so again, the first two. And I a have half. said this multiple times. There is way more bad Star Wars than there is good Star Wars. But the best parts of Star Wars are really really good and the 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 best parts of star wars happen in between the movies yeah your clone wars is your rebels is your Andors. your andors those are the your, your even your Mandal dark forces Mandalorian two season one Knight. and two that's the kind of stuff that carries star wars fans through the dark yeah. times and we're going through the dark times right now the last three the last two and a half movies sucked the the, you know, the High Republic era has been mostly boring for the most part. Although I did read most of the books. That did you came. read the second one? I'm like halfway through it. I have not finished. I read the first one. I started to read it again and then... Uh, I got annoyed by... Then the I started to read some other stuff. and I, I got annoyed by the it. fact that the second book just like does not pick up at all. Yeah, whatever. there's time jumps all over the place. And I they think left that's the off biggest on, They mistake. left off on a cliffhanger and then we're like... Never mind. Yeah, they need to. Yes, he dies. Because like it's like uh -oh. three phases and it's like hundreds of years in between books. Sometimes it's kind of nuts. They was really kind of. I know it was super planned out, like that was the whole point. But I feel like they needed to have like a a spark. But notes. it needs to be consumed. They needed to have a spark note series of books that was just like every event in like linear order, and that was or like easily it, digestible. You don't even have to do it in like linear order, but if you make a series, those need to be in order. Yeah, like one, two, three, four, yeah, five. Like one, and two, that's three. Like and the then you can make thing. three more that take place like a couple years later. Because they're doing a million spinoffs, but they needed to just have that like main series that like casual people could just pick up and read. Yeah, because I don't really care about whatever's going yeah. on in the, the anyway, Disney Plus Jedi Order kids show. No, but in, but in terms of like whose time it is, I feel like we're moving into we're moving into a new era, and I don't really know where we're going. In terms of comic book movies, they will always make Spider Man and Batman. Those will always be hits. Those will always exist. Those will always draw audiences. They'll never stop making those. Every a couple of years, they'll try Superman again. It'll either kind of work or not work. That's just how these things work. That's just how movies have worked for since the original Superman in 1978. Like, well, but there's only think. been one other Superman. Well, like, this is what I'm saying. Every couple of years, like they did the Christopher Reeve, and then it took. A, no, but there's been like four. And then Batmans. it took 15 years, and they tried Superman Returns again, and then there's that been didn't work. Four and they took Batman's years. and three Spider Man's since that. I one know. That's Superman. what I'm saying. Spider Man and Batman will always work. Every yeah. time they crank one of those out, it's going to make money. Superman is like less of a guaranteed slam dunk every time, and so they make movies based on the fact that he's Superman, less so on that like it's a guaranteed hit. Yeah. So that's why it always like takes like 10 years in between Superman movies. Anyway, that's where we're headed. We're headed back to where we were with comic book movies in like the 90s. So where it was just like cartoonish crap before we got into like the good stuff again. How long do you think it will be before we get a good flash, <laughs> a flash movie? Yeah. Buddy, they ain't trying one of those again for 10 years. We're getting a Green Lantern movie here before too long. No, that's a TV show. It would, well, eventually they will make a movie. Until... Every single executive at Warner Brothers who was there when the Flash movie came out <laughs> is gone. Then they will try again. When there are people gullible enough to be like, yeah, let's try this. Oh, okay. The Flash could absolutely work. There's no reason it, why a Flash movie shouldn't work. It could work. work, but when they tried it the first time, it didn't. And so that's going to defy that character for yeah, 15 no, no, no. years. I, I'm well aware. It's the same thing that happened with Green Lantern, which also could totally that's work. That's why that's not a okay. movie. Is well, they... I don't think enough people nowadays remember that to like... Make it not work now. Yeah, they, they could definitely make a new Green Lantern movie. I feel like most people would not. Care. Yeah. But my point well, is... But financially, like, that Green giant Lantern. negative number from that first movie in 2011 is just, it just hovering hangs over, over their heads. all of their heads. And they'll never try it again until it's gone. They're scared. Yeah, they are scared. And they're justifiably and scared. rightfully so, because they keep sucking. DC has never, except for the first Aquaman, has never and may arguably wonder woman but even that the second movie didn't do well they have never been able to like really resonate with an audience with any character that hasn't been batman or they Superman. do the best when they give someone else complete creative control 
like the Batman. That is and... not true. <laughs> they gave yeah, Patty Jenkins complete creative true. control on Wonder Woman 2, and it was, was not very good. Bad. It did not work out. Yeah, you well, know, sometimes it, complete creative it, control really is not good. Remember Thor, a uh, remember Thor Love and Thunder? Yeah. There's yeah. got to be a balance, especially with the comic book stuff. Yeah. Because Thor the Love and Thunder was uniquely terrible, though. Like, that doesn't usually happen. <laughs> They need, but need, it does though, because Wonder Woman had the exact same problems. They need a yeah, person who Wonder has like. Wonder Woman was bad for different reasons than Thor: Love and Thunder was bad. They were bad for very similar reasons. I don't opinion. think so. Thor was a lot of like no. bad, like writing, like in terms of like dialogue and well, jokes. Wonder Woman had completely incomprehensible Wonder dialogue. Wonder Woman Thunder didn't even have a script. Yeah, Thor's was the script problem. Like Wonder Woman's was like the basic like story, like that they chose to do was like a bad story. Yeah, like Thor, like the premise of Thor: Love and Thunder is fine. It fails in the execution. Yeah, oh, the like Thor Wonder story Woman should have worked. The premise of Wonder Woman two was terrible, Never and the execution would. Never would is worked. like only okay. Yeah, that's the pro That's the difference between the two. Anyway, what's what's next? Wait, wait, wait. We want to move on to our final news item. Let's talk about more superhero things. More superhero crap. Marvel Studios. Okay. They're doing the TV show Daredevil Born Again. All right. Or they were. They were. Well, they still are. So they, okay. So they began shooting before the writers and actor strikes, and then they stopped because of them. They filmed, uh, they, they canned like three episodes. And during the time when nothing was happening, Kevin Feige and his brain trust we're watching all the film reels from the first three episodes and said, we don't like this. This is bad. There's too much legal drama and not enough punching. They fired. Every, I'm not joking. They fired every writer on the show cool. and every director who hadn't already shot like their whole episode. Very cool. And they're currently in the process of revamping the entire show, even though they've already shot three episodes of it. So are you telling me? You're telling me. That daredevil. Born again. Boo. Are, are you telling? Are you telling me? Daredevil's getting up, born again. <laughs> hey, got him. Hey. So, hey guys, I gotta go. It's been like an hour, so I'm gonna go. Alrighty, see you later, Patrick. Be here next week. Bye -bye, Put it on friends. your calendar. Yep. Okay. Anyway, so. Marvel is currently uh, revamping their... This is part of a, a giant company shift in their entire uh, television landscape here. Yeah, oh, by the way, just, just real quick to just Daredevil. Um, so basically what happened was they thought it was too much of a legal drama. He didn't apparently even show up in costume until episode four. So they didn't think there was enough action. Uh, there were rumors floating around uh, that Foggy Nelson and Karen Page were both killed off off screen before the first episode. I was I, And that's why he's not Daredevil. It was just foggy. Aaron was but like foggy. Neither one of them are in the show but, as right now. So then they'll still be killed off. They'll be dead. Well, like neither one in the old version of the show they were never cast. Like maybe they'll write them back in now. But they said the cast is staying. Deborah yeah. Ann Wool and uh whoever plays Foggy Nelson were never like like even contacted to be in the show, which I don't even understand. Like yeah, what's that's just dumb. That's just dumb. If you're going to bring back Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio, and they're bringing back. Um, they're bringing back everybody. They're bringing back John Bernthal as the Punisher. Just bring. Those are like the two main characters in Daredevil supporting cast. Yeah. And you're not going to bring them back. Um, but anyway, so apparently that like made him stop being Daredevil for a bit, and so that's why he wasn't going to suit up for four episodes. Um, but that's all going to change now. So who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, but man, there's no way a Daredevil show where he doesn't wear the suit could work. Who wants to see Daredevil not punching people? There's no way where if in the Daredevil show he doesn't wear the suit for like maybe a season. I'm or sure so. eighteen. There's no way that could work. I'm sure eighteen straight episodes of Daredevil beating up goons in a hallway is gonna be a big hit, Marvel. Good idea, pal. Yeah, you don't even. You definitely every episode needs the suit. If there's one problem, I would say I had with the original Daredevil show, it's that he wore the suit. He just kept way... talking too much. He needed to do more hitting things. Yeah, that was the best, that I was, that was the best the, era of the show. I hated it when the characters had interesting conversations. Ugh. Anyway, Marvel... The joke is that in the whole first season of Daredevil, he doesn't wear the suit. He doesn't even wear the full costume until like the final shot of the last episode. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, the company uh, is shifting its entire TV approach to be a little bit more traditional. 
So apparently what happens, what was, was happening is Marvel would green light entire shows on the fly, make them on the fly as, as in shoot the entire thing. Um, and then look at everything they shot, identify all the problems and then go back and just fix it in post. Whoa. And they didn't have showrunners. They had executives who were in charge of each show and they would like dictate what was happening. That's a great system. So apparently what happened was one of the writers on secret invasion, who was who were the guy who created secret invasion um, was one of the, who, who created Mr. Robot. I don't know if you've heard of that. Uh, yeah. The hacker show. Yeah, they created that. You can obviously see, like, oh, yeah, that's probably a good mix with this property, right? Yeah, makes sense. He was fired, replaced by a different writer, and they they rewrote yeah. the entire scripts while shooting. He was fired while they were shooting, and then they rewrote all the good. scripts and reshot the entire show. Good idea. Good system. Um, that always goes well for Marvel movies. Yeah, the main writer of She-Hulk was essentially not involved while they were shooting it and then went well, got, I would hope I would hope they're not involved and then and then was brought back you okay. why so she wrote the show right wait the same person wrote both no, no this is for shield this okay. is a different lady she was she she was basically the showrunner main head writer on the show right they wrote the whole thing then they hired a director who was essentially in control of the whole thing for the six episodes and then they fired the director after she shot everything it brought the head writer back to like manage post production and like head the whole everything Why? after that. Yeah. Why? Because they're they're morons. <laughs> so they were literally shooting 150 million plus seasons of TV on the fly. They didn't hire showrunners. They fixed everything in post production and did reshoots. But I don't get why. Like Marvel was making shows before Disney Plus. Why did this happen? Yeah. So. They're undergoing drastic changes. Um, they're going to start hiring showrunners. They're going to write. They're going to hire TV executives who have experience in the medium to man the whole new division. Uh, and they're going to try to have a creative through line throughout the entire each project. Wait a minute! You're telling me they're going to have a beginning, middle, and end? Yeah, they're also what? going to adopt a new development process that involves writing pilots and making show bibles before shooting. They're going to think out their ideas before they start doing them. This actually makes so much sense. They also say they want to move away from the limited series formats and focus on creating multi-season serialized TV shows that audiences can uh, connect with and like show character development. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, instead of just trying to uh, tie into future Avengers. Projects. They saw Loki. They were like, whoa, people like Loki. That's one they like. And then they made Secret Avengers. Everyone hated it. Everyone pooped all Secret over. Secret Invasion, you mean? Secret Invasion. They went, no, no one likes this. Everybody hates this. We're not doing this no more. Let's do things like we did with Loki. Let's do that. So they're doing that. So Moon Knight show creator uh, and writer and head writer Jeremy Slater quit Moon Knight, and Muhammad Dia, who directed the show, took over, like in the middle of production. Jessica Gao developed and wrote She Hulk Attorney at Law, but was sidelined once director Kate Cairo came on board. Production was challenging, and Go was brought back on to oversee post-production, which is normally what a show writer do, showrunner does. So she was the closest thing they ever actually had to a show, showrunner on one of the Makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. This was, oh, by the way, the main reason they're doing this, they are now uh, contractually obligated to by the new Writers Guild Agreement. Good. We'll get better shows now. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, no. It's weird. It's almost as if when you give the people writing all the television shows more control and actually allow them to do their jobs, the shows come out better. Crazy how Big that shock. Works. Big, oh. big news there. By the way, uh, this article, which was, this was a giant report in The Hollywood Reporter. You can look up the whole thing. It's pretty interesting and not very long. But um, they showed kind of like how each Marvel show has been performing in terms of uh, minutes viewed. Uh, Loki, number one. Uh, this is the first season of Loki. Loki was number one, then WandaVision, then Winter Soldier, Falcon Winter Soldier, and then She-Hulk, and then Moon Knight, and then Hawkeye. Secret Invasion came in right above What If, and then in last place was Miss Marvel. Yep, that sounds about right. Oh, you know, honestly, Miss Marvel was better than... And Secret Echo Marvel. and Agatha, Coven of Chaos, or House of Harkness, or... Whatever it will eventually which be Which Magic Time is... Those are up next. Those are the next things coming. Echo got a new logo. Echo got a new logo. It looks like the Defenders logo. That's a, that's not relevant. Any no, who cares about? Echo? I'm sorry. Who does? No one. No, literally no one. Anyway, just yeah. Don't, just don't. Just don't. This don't is do good. It. I do not understand 
their philosophy before. <laughs> I don't know, like, how, okay. How, Again, how, okay. I don't understand. Marvel made shows before. Yeah. They made Daredevil, they made Defenders. No, 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 no. Marvel Television did. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. In partnership with Netflix. Yes. Marvel but, Television no longer exists. There were people mm -hmm. hired by Marvel who knew how to make TV shows. What happened? Okay, so before there was multiple divisions, that, right? There was Marvel Comics. There was Marvel Television. There was Marvel Studios, who made all the movies, right? Yeah. Okay. Marvel Television went away, and Marvel Studios ate it, okay? And now Marvel Studios is doing both film and TV, except for they fired everyone who was in charge of the TV stuff, so everyone who's making the TV only knows how to make movies. Yeah, so... And then Kevin Feige got promoted... And now he's also in charge of Marvel Comics. So Kevin Feige controls the two branches of Marvel, which is the comic books and the movies and TV shows. Okay? Except for he only has experience working on movies. So he's trying to apply his movie knowledge to his comic books and his TV shows, and it's not they, working. They, okay. Number one, they have way too much in Kevin Feige. Because, right, right, right. Before, you know how they would make movies? Is they would greenlight a movie, right? Mm -hmm. They would write a first draft, and then they would start shooting. And then as they were shooting, they would rewrite it 15 times, and fix everything with CGI and post, right? That right. was their method. And that worked because they were shooting like two hour movies, right? Now you have six episode TV show. Episodes have to flow into each other. Characters have to like change and evolve and have like a purpose for being there for six yeah. whole episodes. And there has to be a point, except for they don't know how to do that. And so they're shooting these $200 million shows and they have to like constantly just shuffle things around and fix it all. And no one knows what they're doing or how to do it. And they don't have anyone in the studio who knows how to make shows. So what they're going to do now is hire people who know how to make TV shows, which is their billion dollar brand new idea. I love how these studios, right? They're, they're like, they're like one, we can't pay our writers and actors. There's not enough money. Two, we're, we're making a lot of, we're making more money than ever before. Everything's great. Also, we're bleeding money and we're making less money than ever before and everything's bad. Oh, and also we're burning $400 million on Miss Marvel. But that's, that's always, <laughs> that's always been the paradox of American business. It's like, guys, they, they say that they're more successful than they've ever been to get investors to invest. Yeah. And then when they go to the taxes, they go, guys, we, guys, were, we sorry, lost so we much just money. lost all of our money. Oopsies. We had sorry, to, we did not get paid taxes. She now. had to cost $500 million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, it's so dumb. Anyway, this Daredevil show, it's probably going to be bad. I'm just saying it because there's no way they're going to fix that entire show within like three months and also incorporate so the footage so from the first three episodes me. into the new version of the show. So you're telling me. By the way, it's already been picked up for season two. That daredevil maybe shouldn't have been born again. Sam, here's an idea. Here's a, listen to this, galaxy brain idea. Right? Listen up. You hire the people who already made the highly successful other Daredevil show nah. and have them keep making the nah. same version of that show. Nah. Not like they or, own that show. Hold, hold, or, or, consider this. It's not like that show's on Disney Plus. And consider nothing. this. Consider this. We hire the writers of Deck the Halls starring Matthew Broderick and Danny DeVito, get them to write 18 episodes of a TV show, not read their scripts before we start shooting, see the footage, decide we don't like their scripts, fire them, and then hire new people who are less experienced to rewrite the entire thing. Now, that's a plan I can get behind. That's <laughs> oh, that kind of plan I like By the way, like this right is going to cost an extra $150 million. That's okay. Million Just do it. Do it twice, actually. <laughs> no, it's good. Do, five, do it five times, actually. Anyway, but do I don't five think more we should times. move entirely away from the limited series. I do think that works for some stuff. Yeah. I just think but... they do need to do more like traditional TV shows because that's what works in the streaming era is these short uh, series with lots of seasons that can be binged. I would argue that none of their limited have. Because WandaVision was completely ignored. The show is fine. Completely ignored. So why bother? Winter, the Captain Falcon and the Winter Warrior, or whatever that show was about, is not going to... So far has been completely irrelevant to their universe. I think they just need to, to, their universe. They need to pick... Which they need to be better about deciding which shows can be like long form and multiple seasons and span a long time, and which ones should be like just quick little like events, like like shows that exist just for like major storylines to be set up. 
those should be the limited series, like Secret Invasion. Yeah, but none Secret of those Invasion have done well, right? I'm just saying in that, like, yeah, this in is a how hypothetical it alternative. In universe. a hypothetical alternative universe, like that show done well, that should be limited because that's six episodes worth of stuff. But, but like, you have the Moon Knight TV show that should just be like eight episodes, multiple seasons, the ongoing adventures of Moon Knight, right? I would rather. That's how that should work. I would rather have those two things have, or not Moon Knight, but I would rather have had in Secret Invasion of just or a avengers level issue like a, a most phase, of these should be MCU. movies but they're not going to do movies because disney is telling them make more content make more content we need more content for our streaming service make they more really content. they really also you have to make five movies a year because they're the only things that ever return any of our money they really screwed themselves over doing them all. yep they really screwed themselves over thinking that creating like 600 hours of content was actually a thing the audience was willing to if adjust. they had done Secret Invasion as their next big phase. Oh, by the way, Marvel Television has produced over 50 hours of content in the past two years. Yes. Um, <laughs> if they had done Secret Invasion as their next phase, I feel like that would have saved them a lot of problems. Because the scale right now of Marvel is incomprehensible. Because they did Thanos, and he was going to wipe out the whole universe, yep. right? So that's pretty freaking big scale. So what do you do after that? Scale back down. No, 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 no. Go bigger. Bring the scale back down. You make it a lot more personal. Because when you can't tell who's your friend, who's your enemy, that's inherently interesting. And the scales are a lot smaller. You can get a lot more personal with the characters. We can really flush out some of these new characters we're In adding. Individual television shows for Disney+. Plus. That, that too. You could do lots of things. But no, instead, they went with the multiverse. Instead of bringing the sta this stakes back down, we're going, well, if one universe was in jeopardy, now every, every universe, universe is, is in jeopardy. jeopardy. Which, one is dumb, because it, it it's increases scale to an incomprehensible Yeah, level. okay, like, when you Where say... Where you can't care. Like, it's impossible to yeah, care. Yeah, like, when you say, the Earth is going to end. Like, okay, that's okay, a thing I live on every Earth. human can understand. <laughs> When you say the universe is going to end, it's like, all right, well, you know, I don't really know the aliens, but I guess Earth is still going to get destroyed. So I still kind of care about this. If you say the multiverse is going to get destroyed, it's like, okay, but like, I don't really care about like the version of myself where I'm like a, a clown with one eye. Like, I don't care about that guy. Why would I care about that? No, guy? okay. The reason is, is because they saw Endgame. Endgame made a lot of money. It was a giant hit. They said, okay, what are the two things in Hollywood that are make the most money right now? It's this Avengers, and it's cheap nostalgia bait. So what we have to do is take this Avengers and increase the scale. Because if we increase the scale, it'll be more money, right? Like one plus one equals two. So they said we got to increase the scale, and we got to add the cheap nostalgia, right? But Kang's not even because, a nostalgia villain. No, not to, but like bringing the Fox X Men back, bringing Tobey Maguire Spider Man. Of that. But they're doing it right now. Like they did Tobey Maguire Spider Man, but like that wasn't even like. I would argue that that was like tasteful. Like that wasn't even like nostalgia. Because bait. they knew that those actors, I mean, X -Men, the original X-Men, Fox X-Men movie came out 23 years ago. They're running out of time to bring those actors back in those roles. Yeah. So they have to do that while they're still able to like do the kicking and punching. But they're not even- They have to increase the scale because in order to, for, because in their minds, in order for general audiences to care, it has to be bigger than the last thing, right? It has to be worth the investment of going to the theater again. And so those were the two major things, and they added them together, and this is what we got. And so they're blowing their load all over the place. They're doing every single thing they can possibly do because it printed money before, back in 2018, 2019, and now if we just do more of it, it's bound to keep printing the same amount of money. They don't understand, See, okay. they don't understand why Endgame worked. Hang on. To them, Endgame worked because it was a big-scale thing, right? Well, that's and it, because, part of it, yeah. Because it had all these characters in it. If they put in every character that's ever existed and it has a way bigger scale than the last bigger scale thing, then it'll make more money. Okay. Because to them, that's, what, that's what's happening here. I don't even necessarily disagree with that, though. If you make a bigger scale movie with more characters people recognize, that should make more money. I don't even disagree with that. My point is, that just happened. Yep. If you do that again, right after, it's not special. So you got to bring it back down a little bit a little bit of a low-key era, then pop off again later on. You can bring back all the X-Men. 
You can bring back the Deadpools. You can bring back the Spider-Man. And the Sp again, I have no problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you can bring in all these nostalgia bait characters. That's fine. But do it later. Don't do it right now. It's too early right now. We just came off of Endgame. That was, that was earth-changing in terms of, like, cinema presence. That's not going to happen again. Have to chill out a little bit. Have to give it time to breathe. Didn't do that. They just but what went... if we hold up? What if we do the same thing but more? Well, now you're <laughs> saying some real what words. If, say a, it's our prize-winning racehorse. So what if we beat it with sticks until it goes faster? That's a good idea. And we Why beat it, think it is four times as much. What if we chop off his legs and replace them with robot legs <laughs> from the movie? Six million dollar man <laughs> that will bring in the nostalgia a horse. TV show. Oh, but there's a movie. This is gonna be a movie about the six million dollar oh, horse. Okay, I see what you say. No, six it's million like dollar horse movie. It's a tale as old as time. No, every it's Hollywood, a horse no, every, it's a tale. Every Hollywood studio, as soon as they found a thing that works, they milk it, beat that thing into the ground until it is there's nothing left of it. And that's where they're at with Marvel. They're just gonna keep it's not dead yet, but they will beat it until it is. You know what. I'm calling it now, okay? I'm. This is seven or eight or six years out, right? When Secret Invasion comes out, or not Secret Invasion, Secret Wars, it'll be the most expensive movie ever made by far. Probably, yeah. It'll probably cost 500 to 600 million dollars production. With inflation, budget. yeah, that makes sense. It will be the most, it will be the biggest financial disappointment in movie history, and it'll be the official end of this era. I don't think that that... I don't see a world where a movie with the word okay. Avengers on it isn't a financial success. I don't see a world where it could possibly make up the amount of money they are going to spend on it. If, it, if they spend $500 million on it and it makes $800 million right now, which it would, if it didn't make a billion, right now it's it would definitely be profitable. Right now it's on the calendar for 2028, I believe. That's 20 years since the MCU started. I, I doubt there's... I mean... Mario games still sell. Five years. But that's a whole other thing. But you get what I'm saying. Like, just because it's old doesn't mean okay, it's not Okay, but sell. video games and movies are completely different. Because Mar you don't need to play Mario 2 for Mario Galaxy to make sense to you. But that's because they've chosen for... Marvel explicitly chose for it not to be that I way. I know. <laughs> but they're going to... Re they're rebooting in, in Secret Wars. That's obvious. To anyone blame? Yeah, blame that is all. true. And we, that that will reset. That that'll fix all those problems. But we get to that point. We're not even talking about because then they're bringing in Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, Tobey Maguire, Spider Man, whatever the Fox Fantastic Four are from two thousand and five. Right? They're gonna bring in all this stuff, mm -hmm. and that that stuff doesn't go back to just twenty years. That stuff's gonna go back twenty five years, almost thirty years. Right? By twenty twenty eight. True. The the level of investment you would have to put in to do the homework and the level of care that the audience is going to have by that point is so little. Like, I, I can't see a person who is 15 now caring about a Marvel thing, bringing back characters from 10 years before they were born. Why not? Because they have no reason to care. Like I don't well, We saw Star the, Wars and that was freaking like 30 when we saw it for okay, the first time but we're weirdos okay no but every little kid <laughs> likes star wars we weren't the only ones all of our friends had plastic lightsaber toys and clone trooper action figures but that also was three movies and not 35 but it will be one day <laughs> okay so two points that i have to me. one one piece exists but your argument is invalid two <laughs> okay but your average teenager or average 18 year old right mm -hmm. joe schmo going to high school on the football team he's never he doesn't he has not seen every episode of one piece he's probably seen at least like eight or nine marvel movies honestly no i'm just talking about like media one who, piece is the best-selling manga of all time who is the audience to this day who is the audience for marvel everybody it's it's your average everyday movie goer yeah it's everybody super casuals right yeah super casuals don't remember what happened in the last Spider-Man movie before the most recent. Like, you ask an average guy what happened in Spider-Man Far From Home, they don't remember. They would probably remember. They might know he went to, like, Europe or something, but they don't but remember. But that's all they need to know. 
Because, okay, okay. individual so chapters then in Marvel are not that Then you have to dumb important. down the level of information necessary for entry to, like, no, baby level. But it's always been like that. Like, okay, if you watch just the Avengers movie and you hadn't seen Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, you'd be fine. Like, these characters are very well established at this point. Even if you haven't seen all of the movies, that's not really necessary. You just kind of need to know who they are. And, like, yeah, there will be easter eggs and like relevant information that you may have missed out on but nothing that is like so over like so hard to overcome that you won't be able to figure it out like Kang was the villain in ant-man and no one was complaining that like oh i didn't see loki so i didn't know what was going on like no one was saying that people just didn't like ant-man because it sucked and like when kang is eventually the villain in Kang dynasty and secret wars People aren't going to be going, oh, I, I didn't see Ant-Man, so I have no idea what's going on. They're going to be like, oh, this Kang guy is a new villain. And it's the same thing that happened with uh, Infinity War. What percent of the audience do you think knew Thanos was that alien guy from the post credit scene of Avengers 1? Very little. Very few. But they still went to Infinity War and were like, whoa, this Thanos guy's freaking cool. Because it, you don't... That stuff is really more Easter eggs for the people who are really paying attention. But the main plot okay. of Marvel movies, in terms of like the big ones like Avengers and kind of Guardians of the Galaxy, those you can kind of just go into. You don't really need all the background information. Like Age of Ultron. If you just watched Age of Ultron and pretty much nothing else in that phase of Marvel, if you, w if you just watched Avengers 1 and Avengers 2, you're good. You don't okay. really need anything else. I have a question. Else. Why is the Marvels going to underperform? No one cares about these three kids. Okay. They're not big names. Why did Ant-Man underperform? Because it sucked. And because Ant-Man's also not a big name. Do you think those... Who is a big name? Who's a big name? Iron Man, Captain America, Thor. Okay. Dead? Not gonna be in it. Thor 4 underperformed. Yeah, but that underperformed... Why are these movies going to underperform? Right? Why, they, why did they underperform? As opposed, And how is Secret Wars gonna do well? Like, I don't understand... Because... Okay. Audience, your under audience losing interest is them losing interest forever. The audience very rarely dips something and then comes back to it. That's definitely not true. Okay, there can be gaps, but they very rarely, like, completely let go of something and then get excited when it comes back. Because you're, you're, you're forgetting a piece of this that very few... Is it nostalgia? No, no, no. That very few movie franchises have the opportunity to capitalize on. The only one I can even really think of is Star Wars. And that is new kids being born who will now become fans in time to watch the next one. But they don't have time. For but the they level, definitely do. The level of if stuff. If I'm 11 years old and I have access to Disney Plus, every night I'm going to be watching a Marvel movie. And I'm 11 years old. I have nothing else going on. Toys don't exist anymore. I can watch Iron Man while I'm playing Fortnite. And I'm going to have a great freaking time. But do, and then when Avengers come out, I'm going to go, Mommy, take me to go see Avengers. Do young people, are, like, are really young people going to care? Yes. They'll, but they'll only care if, right, if like, older people care. That's not, that's not true at all. The Paw Patrol's movie made okay. so much money. Do you, do you think there's going to be, like, because right now the fandom is dying out, right? It's dying out. The that's audience true. interest is dying out. Do you think there will just be, like, this random... Not random, but like this whole new group generation of fans that will just it's, emerge. It's dying. Or do you think out, the but it's not dead? Okay, but once this audience stops caring, right? Why are the new audience? Why is the new generation going to invest the time? Because there's no reason to do it now because no one cares anymore. Okay, one people will care in the future because your friend Timmy is going to see a Marvel movie and he's going to think it's cool. He's going to get his Who's going to show him a Marvel movie? People see movies. He might just watch one on Disney+. Plus. That's what it's for. But, like, I don't even remember what I was thinking, but what was I going with this? The Marvel audience is not dead. Not at all. Not even a little bit. Spider-Man No Way Home made a billion million dollars. Because it attracted the casuals. That's fine. You have to get the casuals. Avengers will capture the casuals. One, that's what I'm saying. That's really my point. One billion million percent, the casuals are going to see Avengers. 
for the same reason the casuals went to go see Avatar. Because it's got a big A on it. And the big A means you go see it. That's it. They didn't watch the freaking any of the other stuff. They didn't play the Avatar video game. They don't care about that. I just like I just have the sense that like a lot of the people who saw Endgame, if another Avengers movie came out, like they just wouldn't care. They might not care about the smaller Marvel projects. I'm saying another Avengers. But they will definitely care when the new Avengers movie, because that is that is on a scale. Again, even if like. It gets okay if it gets like three fourths. But it was on a scale. It was on a scale for a reason, and that reason can't be recreated with the current climate. But you don't because the reason that scale existed was because of the sense that there was build up and that there was an audience to the stuff that was building up, and so it was really big when that had a payoff. The stuff that is building up now, one, there's way too much of it, and two, they don't care about the stuff that's building up. So when all that culminates. No one cared about anything that led up to that. Okay, but we know a few it, things. It's stuff is culminating, but no one cared about anything that was culminating before. Hang there's on, there's just the climax. They w- they skipped straight from the beginning to the end, and there's no middle. The biggest problem Marvel having Marvel's having right now is they've made a series. They've made several misses in a row. The Marvels always had misses. Iron Man two was a miss. They. Thor 3 was a miss. They've always had misses going back way before this era. It's just they weren't as consistent. Marvel has had a a couple big misses in a row now. But Marvel's not... They still have time to recover. Like, the shows are not doing well, but if they fix it all, they could start doing well. And Loki's doing really good. That could, could, you know, bring more audience to that. The movies still have time to get on a, a direction. They still have time to sort of figure out what's going on. Yeah, Ant-Man 3 was bad. Thor 4 was bad. Marvel's is probably not going to be good. But that's just three. And what the, the Doctor Strange was not great. But like they've had someone, some that are big hits. They had Spider-Man. They had Black Panther, which was a pretty big success. They've had hits. They haven't been as consistent. I think that's their problem right now. Once, and they will eventually fix their stuff because they know that maybe they, they know, that it's know that's going to happen let's assume that they know it's broken because it's obviously broken and that they try to fix it and that they're successful to some degree okay but what if they can't fix it why wouldn't they be able to fix it because they don't know what they're doing now why would they know what they're doing tomorrow Bec- well we can see the steps they're taking with the stuff that they're saying now they're taking you know intentional action in a corrective direction I think that's a good thing. I think that will lead to a recovery. If the stuff that they're saying now comes to fruition and it isn't bad. I'm thinking of it more as like a just like a straight up like superhero movies for all of their discussion and how many of there have been and how long they've been around now are a trend. They're a Hollywood trend. Hollywood trends have existed forever. Are they a trend or a genre? They're a trend. Trends don't usually last for 20 years. It's a trend. Genres do. It's a very long-lasting trend, right? But genres exist because there's variety within a genre. Superhero movies, there's very little variety. There's, right? there's a good amount of variety. Most superhero movies are the same. Most, but most westerns are the same. There's still a good amount of variety. But Western we, genre. Do we make westerns really all that much anymore? No. But that's my point. Genres can go in and out of fashion. I just, but there could be an era I where Westerns come back. I don't, we don't know. see like a general audience still caring about superheroes broadly like 10 years from now. That I just don't might under- be the case. I don't understand why they... like. There's, But even, even if the audience is significantly smaller, and I, again, I compare it to Avatar, the scale that those movies are on, and I'm not talking about the scale of the story. I'm talking about the scale of the cultural awareness is so large that there's no way that a, a massive chunk of the population isn't going to go see it. Same thing happened with Star Wars, even. Star Wars's reputation was in the dumps after Episode Eight, And people still went to go see Episode Nine in droves. Not as many, but still enough to make it profitable. Okay, but their problem is that spending is going up and audience interest is going down. And so either spending has to go down... Or audience interest has to come back up 
and get to the point where it matches back up with spending. Well, what's more likely to happen? Either. Spending is more likely to go down. But if spending goes down, right, then the scale goes down. And if the scale goes down, but then you're there's talking less about audience the scale, interest. You're talking about the scale of a story. The scale of a story does not necessarily directly correlate to the scale of the audience at all. I think that's if that a were the case, true, but I think like if that were the case, then everything okay. everywhere all at once would have been the biggest movie of all time. Oh, that's a whole other thing. But you get what I'm saying. But like, what what Marvel movies have worked like recently? Okay, for example, like the big scale ones. Not necessarily. Like Spider Man was immensely successful. The scale of that movie was not that. That big. movie was successful because it had three Spider Mans in it. But you get my point. The scale is that not is what made it scale. successful. That is big scale to the audience is having the three Spider Man. It was surprising. But it was not a big scale. Big scale is Avengers having 50 characters. It has to be a big thing. Like, it has to have something to draw people in. But that's not true. Because the movies that... Doctor are... Strange, that worked. But that big appeal of that one was... It's a multiverse thing and there's going to be all these But that one didn't work. Everyone didn't like that. But it made money. It made more money than most Okay, of so what, are we, what is our metric here? That it made money or that it was... It made money. money. That's what matters at the end of the day. Okay, well, in that case, then, like... Didn't Thor 4 make money? It made way less money than it should have made. But it made money. Yeah, it broke even. Doctor Strange made way less money than it was supposed to. But it made money. Doctor Strange made more money than the first one. And almost yeah, made a billion. Yeah, but again, that's because the audience was bigger. But even that, that one should have made a billion. Like, that should have made a billion dollars and it didn't. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, what... And th that's another thing, is the audience has only gotten bigger. The audience reception has gotten worse, but the audience, the audience has, has gotten, not bigger. gotten bigger. Then why did more people see Doctor Strange 2 than Doctor Strange 1? If people liked it significantly less... Which audience are you talking about? Are you talking about... People. Okay, are you talking about like Avengers Endgame audience? Or are you talking about like... The audience for superhero movies has gotten larger. For sure. That's not even since a debatable when? topic. Since... I mean, Doctor Strange... Okay. Since Endgame Doctor, was a peak, right? Yeah. It's never going to get bigger than Endgame. It's not no, bigger than not. Endgame. No, So what you're getting now is the current audience is a fraction of that Endgame audience. Right? Yes, but it's still a and very large And the longer it goes on, that fraction is going to get lower and lower and lower. Because over time, people get bored of stuff. Yeah. That is a fact of life. New things happen. There are new trends. TikTok exists. And everyone's attention span is 35 seconds now. So that's as that, that fraction gets lower and lower of that endgame audience. So what they have to do is they have to find a new audience that isn't the endgame one. But the problem is the only people who are invested are the endgame audience. You have to catch people up or introduce something new or a jumping off point. And I think that's what they're going to do. With that's what they're going to do with Secret Wars. But the problem is, is if you do Secret Wars 20 years into the MCU, then the people who have been watching for 20 years feel cheated and All like right. they haven't been, uh, the, they haven't I, I kind of look at gotten Marvel, what they deserve. I kind of look at Marvel the same way I look at Minecraft, right? Minecraft is the biggest game ever. But Minecraft also has massive dips and that's chasms exactly, in its popularity. Exactly. It dips and it goes back up, but it always goes back up eventually. Minecraft was huge. However, then everyone thought it was annoying and it dipped, then it came back, then it dipped again, then PewDiePie started playing. And it the difference again. is the level of Minecraft coming out and the amount of money they're spending on it really doesn't change. M Marvel, the amount of money they're spending and the amount that comes out is exponentially growing. Yes, but they cannot stop themselves. They we, have to keep going. We know from what they have stated that they are planning on scaling back the amount of content they're making. We, we know they've said as much. We, we, we don't know anything other than what they've said. If what that they have said is their plan, then we know that they're going to be scaling back. We know that they will start spending less per project than they have been. But, and this is all stuff that we know that they, they want to yeah. do. So if, if they do those things, then Marvel will be a very sustainable thing for a very long time. Even if it's not as big as it was at its peak, it will be sustainable for a very long time. And that's what I'm saying. I think, I think if they can course correct now, if they make the changes they say they want to make, they can, keep, they can keep Marvel stable enough to get to the reboot where they can reset everything. I, I, I see that as a perfectly valid potential future. See, I think the bigger, biggest problem is the name. Marvel has been around long enough where it's associated with, a, with an identity, the Marvel brand. And I compare it to McDonald's because it's, McDonald's is a brand, right? And regardless of the quality, the brand will always define it. The public perception 
will always yeah. define it. People don't get excited about McDonald's. It's just there. That's true, but McDonald's still makes At a certain every point, year. Marvel is no longer exciting because of the brand, because of what has been established, because of a baseline level of interest from a person that cannot grow based on the brand name. But brands can change. McDonald's could change everything tomorrow. There's still McDonald's to your average person. That's true. But the average person is only the average person for so long. Because what Cause, the brand name is, is, an, it is associated with an identity, and that identity is a stereotype, dramatic, like, reduction of whatever that thing actually is. Yeah. So, like, your average person associates Marvel with, like, a generic comedy action to our superhero romp. Yeah. And no matter what they do, that version of a Marvel movie in their head will always what they be what they associate with every new Marvel thing. No matter what happens to that identity tomorrow, that is what it is to them. Yes. You to can't them, change that. You don't have to change it to them. Because with all properties that outlive us, clear Marvel absolutely will, the, those identities change through the new fans. Marvel will always be around, Think about Star but I, Wars. It, it won't be as big. That, in that 10 might years. be the case, but look at Star Wars. Star Wars hit peaks no one thought movies could ever reach, and then decades later did it again, and then decades later matched it again. I think because despite our perception of Marvel today, or our perception of these brands today, the perception of the next generation. We'll always define it when we're gone. See, I think the more likely thing is is that it burns itself out and then it goes away and then later on it comes back. And a, like yeah, a that couple... could absolutely definitely Because I'm just thinking, I'm comparing it. Okay, internally I'm comparing this to Star Trek, right? Star Trek came out in 1966. It was a massive failure. Okay, everyone yeah. forgot about it. It got into reruns in the 70s and became huge. And then they really brought it back with TNG and the movies. And those were big hits. And so what they did was they made a bunch of shows at once and they burned it into the ground really, really fast. Yeah. <clears throat> and the audience lost interest in it. And now they're in the same place where it dipped, it dipped again and it kind of went back up and then they burned it all out again. But, and it just goes in that cycle. Star Trek never reached because the, the scale that Marvel Because did. the audience gets overwhelmed. The audience does not want to feel like they have to do homework. And even if you only make three movies, even if you only make two movies and two shows a year... That still feels like homework to your average audience member. Okay. It has to be a thing they only think about every few months. Let me give you another example, though. Doctor Who. Same thing. Make it forever. It takes a million years to do all the homework it required to watch that show. Not really. Still immensely popular. But they never, ever decided to make six Doctor Who spinoffs airing concurrently as the oh, current Doctor Who. But they did. And they did the Time War. And they had like four concurrent versions of the Doctor going in. I'm saying there was never like a spinoff about his companions that was airing at the same time. Like Doctor, That's true. Doctor Who's been around for a really long time. But every Doctor Who fan who is currently alive today has never seen any Doctor Who stuff probably before 1983. Mostly because a lot of that stuff literally doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, the, it's been the destroyed. Masters are time. gone. Yeah. So. And that also, again, that never, that was never huge. Marvel will always have a niche level of fandom, right? Marvel will never go away. There will always be some Marvel yeah, thing that's coming what I'm out saying. and fans. And the I problem think... is, the problem is not that the niche fans go away. It's the fact that the general audience interest goes away. Because general audience okay. interest dips and flows with everything all the you're, time. You're right. But hang on. Let me, let me it's say like something. It's like politics. There will always be a niche audience. And the niche audience is always a percentage of the larger audience. If the larger audience reaches the scale that Marvel has, that niche audience, relative to everything else, will still be pretty big. Like, even if Marvel were a sixth of its current size, it would still be bigger than almost any other individual movie IP that is currently cycling through theaters. So, like, even, even if the Marvel audience falls off, mm -hmm. it goes to half of what it is now, it's still going to be the biggest audience in theaters. Every time. Well, that's mostly because there is nothing else. But in that's true. But that's also because that's how big Marvel is now. And I don't think that... I don't think that in the near future, it's going to get 
to an apocalyptic level of smallness. Maybe, yeah, maybe like way after Secret Wars, maybe like after that. I could see after Secret Wars okay. it totally falling off, but I don't see it falling off before that. The problem is, is that they've already made before, right? Every one of these at least made money. The problem is that they've, ar is that they've already had one that actively lost it. Yeah, but every IP has a movie that... But before, they, they were hitting home runs every time. But that's not, in, that's not entirely true. And they're hitting true. less and less and less. Like, Thor 3 was not a huge... A huge or Thor 2. It Thor made, 2 was not a huge success. It made its money back, and it made... Thor 2 wasn't. That's what I'm saying. They've always had misses. But they were all making money. Thor 2 was not a huge hit, but it made its money back. But Thor 4 wasn't a huge hit, and but it, it made, made its, money, its back. money back. Ant-Man 3 which is what I'm talking about. That one actively lost money for them. Yes, but that one was uniquely terrible. As soon as they're become, like Marvel was able to get to the scale it is because literally nothing they were doing was losing money. Yeah. As soon as this part starts losing money and this part starts losing money and this part starts losing money, then the, 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 it, the wells dry up and the strings get thinner and there's less of them, right? You have less to work with. Yeah, okay, okay. That, that, I, that's, a, that's a fine metaphor, the strings, right? Let, let's, let's think about this relatively speaking. If Ant-Man is, is one of the strings holding up Marvel and the Ant-Man string breaks, you know how freaking tiny the Ant-Man string is compared to the Avengers string? The Avengers string is made of Kevlar titanium fibers. Okay, and that's Avengers. That, that's what I'm saying. My Captain only Marvel. argument is that Avengers is on track to underperform. What if that string breaks? Then you lose the Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel string. That's the that's the that, you know, yeah, that's, that's the smallest that's string right, that on Captain the whole Marvel. thing. It's the Captain Marvel. What if the next Doctor Strange doesn't do very well? What if the next Thor doesn't do any well? Yeah. If all of their future projects do bad, they will go down. Why do people? But we have no okay. guarantee that all their future projects are going but to. People do stop bad. caring about these two. Why are they going to keep caring about this one if they don't care about these two? Because anymore? they like that one and they hate those two. But That's, why do they hate these two? Because they sucked and they didn't like them. Okay, well, what if this one sucks? Then it goes out. Okay, but there will still be a group of fans who remember the good one. And be like, yes, that was good. Ant-Man has never really, like, been the best Marvel has to offer. Captain Marvel absolutely hasn't. So, like, those two, like, examples are probably, like, the easiest ones to break off. Thor should not have failed. Absolutely not. Doctor Strange as well. Those should have been big. But those movies did still make their money back, even though they sucked. And if they make another one, if they make another Thor movie, and it's good, it will definitely do well. Like, there's still enough faith in that character and in that brand for it to do well in the future. I don't know. I just, like, just being around people. And just, like, I, I just have this sense that, like, it might just be, like, people in my immediate circle, but I just really have this sense that, like, people don't, that they care way 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 less than they did back in 2000 okay, but i think that's because you just care way more about movies than everyone else and so no i don't think it's that i think it's like less than yours guardians 3 came out and i heard a couple of people talking about it and they were like oh well marvel hasn't been very good recently i don't really care yeah but people said that about guardians 2 like not a lot of people cared about and guardians and you know 2. guardians 3 made money and it and it came back and people liked it but like I just feel like there's just so little, like, there's no, there is no excitement. There is a sense of obligation. That is what brings okay, no, the wait, general what audience. A, what about um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? That had massive amounts of excitement. Okay. But for, my point is just Marvel okay. movies were for all, all intents and purposes of comic book discussions. Spider-Man and Batman are the complete outliers, okay? <laughs> Spider-Man and Batman are like money printers for all time. They will never not print money, okay? Those are the exceptions. But in terms of everything else they make, like, it's just this general sense of, eh, I'm, uh, it's too much for me. Yeah, right now, though. Because I heard people talk about the Disney Plus shows, and I have yet to encounter another person who has watched, like, any of them. Like, I've seen people, I've heard people watch a couple, but no one is watching all of them. Like, no one is, no general audience member but I don't, is that dedicated to watching them as they were watching all the movies. I don't think Marvel expects the, the general fun, audience okay, to watch But part of them. the fun of Marvel was, like, keeping up with it. yeah. And that is gone. That is not because it became homework. But if it that if it, part is no longer fun to them. If they bring the amount of content down back to a manageable level, that is a re they can recover from that. Maybe, maybe they can. But I feel like once like 
the novelty of that. One, it's because this has been done to death. Everything is a cinematic universe now. The novelty of the cinematic universe is gone. Okay, but name one other successful. Star Wars is a cinematic universe. Okay, from Star after Trek Marvel. is a cinematic from after universe. Marvel. Uh, Conjuring is a cinematic universe. From after Marvel. What do you mean? After 2008? Yes, after like... Star Wars didn't become a cinematic universe until after 2008. Star Trek didn't become mean? a cinematic universe. There were six Star Wars movies 2000, before 2008. Until 2000, until after 2008. Conjuring didn't exist until 2014. The MonsterVerse didn't exist until 2014. Okay, but the MonsterVerse is the only one of those that is successful. No, they're not. None of them are as successful as Marvel because there is no as successful as Marvel. That's what but I'm saying. But in terms of like the novelty of this Iron Man thing and this Thor thing exist in the same world is gone. Everything exists in That's the same true. world as everything that else. That novelty is gone. So the that novelty of that, the novelty of keeping up with it, uh, the novelty of it's all good is gone. Like it, the things that made it special, the novelty go away. The novelty has been replaced with expectation, and that is their biggest downfall, because the novelty has been gone for a long time. And what happens when a novelty becomes the standard? Expect novelty. So now that the novelty is gone. People's expectations are for it to meet their feelings that they had when they saw the original ones. That's not going to happen. So you're expecting the impossible, basically, because it's not going to be the same. And that, that, can only, that can only underwhelm you after a certain amount of time. But those things that make it special are what make it successful. Yeah. And when there's nothing special about it, it can't, it's not going to stay successful. But they're still, What's going to be special about Marvel in 10 years? They're still the only one, other than, I'd say, really Godzilla versus Kong, that is consistently able to be this cohesive. Out of all the other cinematic universes, other than, like, Star Wars, but that's, like, not even really a cinematic universe. But in order to appreciate how universe. cohesive everything is, you have to be... You have to be on top of everything, and most people are. But they're still the most popular cinematic universe. That's far. they're the king right now. But like in terms of ten years from now, what makes what like what will be special about Marvel? There's there what will be special about going to a Marvel movie? A thing that at that point you will have done like uh, maybe a hundred times. Don't know. They'll have to come up with something. Going to Olive Garden is fun the first time, <laughs> and then you go to Olive Garden the two hundred and fiftieth time, and it's like going to work. Yeah. And you don't want to go to work. <laughs> but what if they demolish the Olive Garden and build a new restaurant? Except for in this situation, in this analogy, it would be like Olive Garden and presents <laughs> yeah, Olive it, Branch. It, it, yeah, it's a slightly different Italian restaurant, <laughs> but that's still different. Anyway, uh, that's we we it's gone right, too what, long. Do we have anything? Uh, uh, no, we got that's a little. It. We got a little bit. Oh, did you watch this season premiere of Rick and Morty? I for I didn't even realize it came out. It was not movie. great. Yeah, I saw the really, audience score was really bad. It was just it was just nothing. Like it wasn't fun. It wasn't like creative. It just felt like super. It felt like they were just like going through the motions of like what's a Rick and Morty thing. That we can do. Oh, Rick gets drunk again. Oh. Hundred years, Morty. Hundred, hundred years. years, Rick and Morty. And the new voices are fine. Um, there is definitely less, like, you can feel less improv. Was there Rick. incest? No. So we know we know who it was. Well, unless there's incest in episode two. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it's just I don't know. It feels again. That's another show. The Rick and Morty might be Simpsonsing itself. Yeah. Where they just keep yeah, going it, it, and, it just, yeah, and no one cares sure. and they run yeah. out of ideas. I think they are out of ideas for Rick and Morty. I think they've been out of... Well, no, because they still have the whole subplot that they were... Once they finish that, they'll be out of ideas. All right. Um. Yeah, I didn't see that. I'll watch it when I get home. I didn't realize it came out, <laughs> which is really weird. For Um... This is a bit of a weird thing, but it's kind of gaming, kind of tech time. But the United States has blocked RTX 4090 shipments. Okay. NVIDIA is a Chinese company. Oh, okay. That would be like if China blocked all shipments of iPhone to the United States. Like, what? How? How are they doing that? What, what's going, what is going Who on? Who knows what's going on in Congress? Uh, well, they don't. <laughs> 
They don't even have a speaker. They don't even have a speaker, but yeah. I Will they know. have a speaker by the time this episode goes up? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, I just thought that that was really weird. Anyway. I just wanted to point out the fact that U.S. We... has blocked shipments of Chinese products to China. We will be back next week to talk about... I'm very excited. For... Yes, we will be watching... Pillars, Pillars of, the of the Flower Moon. Moon. I can't wait to spend four hours in a movie. That'll be so good. Sam's looking forward to it. I'm going to be in the bathroom a lot. Oh my gosh, Sam's going to go to the bathroom at least eight times. No, I'll probably go like three. It'll be at least... Depends on how many refills. You do an average of three it during depends a two-hour Yeah, movie. but that's a two-hour It depends on how many refills I can sneak. So... Because usually I can get a refill or two. That's like... It's probably That's like a bathroom two. per that's refill. That's like five. That's like 1.5 bathrooms per refill. Anyway. That's a pretty good ratio. I can't wait to talk about it. I'm sure we'll have nothing but good things to say. Unless it's bad. You never know. Anyways, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.